yeah, we're going to talk about Resident Evil today. Sure. It's got a story history. It's a long, long video game long series. Long the... video games. What was... So just to start, mm. what was the first Resident Evil that you played? To start even more before we start, what is Resident Evil as what? a series? You know what? Yeah, why don't we go back to that? What is Resident Evil? It's difficult to define because it started off as a thing. And then it shifted into something completely it different. shifted into something else. And then also they tried doing spinoffs, which were something very, very different that did not work. Yes. And then it immediately did a complete shift all the way back and then it overcorrected. It's like, it's all over the place. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's got massive understeer and oversteer somehow. It's a game about zombies, except when it's not about zombies. It's about infected parasite people, except when it's not. And it's a fact, it, it's about uh, go- goopy people that come out of goopy the Goopy super- people. And then except when it's not, when it's about vampires and werewolves, except yes when it isn't so many different things yeah so resident evil the very first resident evil was a survival horror game for the playstation one the playstation one back when it was just the playstation Mm -hmm. uh son i'm gonna get you with the playstation for christmas no um (laughs) <laughs> I'm getting immediately off topic yeah, here. Yeah, try and focus a little bit, please. But did you, did your parents ever refer to, like, every single thing as one game? Like, the Nintendo? The Game Boy, yes. Yeah, yeah, my family, it was the Sega. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's not a Sega. It's not a Sega, Mom. Anyway, the first Resident Evil was a PlayStation 1 game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a survival horror game where you were trapped inside a mansion... Which actually wasn't a mansion. It kind of was a combination between... Let's not dive into the plot or anything, because that is ridiculously over No, 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 I'm saying the first Resident Evil was actually kind of a combination between, like, a point-and-click adventure game... Oh, yeah. ...and a third-person... not really a shooter... It's it's absolutely not a shooter. It's almost like a puzzle game of sorts. Yeah, it was like a point-and-click adventure game, only a real-time point-and-click adventure game... In which there are zombies. If I could try to describe this game to anybody who had never played it before, I would say you're in a very big building with a lot of rooms and you have to figure out where the keys are. So you unlock one room, find the key there, go to the next room, use the key on that room to find the thing inside there. So you're running around this mansion trying to avoid the threats. There are zombies everywhere and you can try to run away from them or you can try to shoot at them. But this is not a shooter game and if you shoot at every single zombie and try to kill every single zombie, you might find yourself lacking in ammo midway through the game, and then you might uh, lock yourself out of the... Yeah, you might soft-lock yourself out of the game. Yeah. can't actually beat the game. I've done it a couple times with those old games. Code Veronica was especially bad, because uh, you'd use up all your ammo, and you'd be trapped on an airplane fighting a boss in a very enclosed space, and if you didn't have any ammo... You just can't get past the game anymore. There's nothing you can do because you used up all of your ammo. Mm -hmm. You wasted all of your resources getting to the airplane. And now you've got nothing there. Yeah. That was Resident Evil 1. Um, It was also Resident Evil 2 and 3. That was, for the longest time, survival horror was Resident Evil. It wasn't until 4 that it changed, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. So Resident Evil, what, what was the first Resident Evil that you played? Probably Resident Evil 2 on the PlayStation. Okay, I think that was... Yeah, Resident Evil 2 was the first one I played as well. Possibly. I think we may have shared discs. We may have. Um, No, because I actually played it... The first time I played Resident Evil 2 was on the N64. Oh, okay. Which, believe it or not, they actually ported Resident Evil 2... To the N64. I remember that being a pretty big game, and they're like, they, I think they squeezed the most out of the N64 cartridge. Yeah, they squeezed a lot out of it, which meant that all the cutscenes were super, super low resolution. <laughs> At the time, they were fantastic. Uh-huh. But, like, I, I recently went back and watched the <laughs> N64 cutscenes, and they're, like, the size of a freaking postage stamp. Back before anybody knew what P was, it was like, whoa, glorious 144P. Yeah, it was... But yeah, that was that was the first one I played as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it came on two. Yeah, there were two separate discs. Yeah, it was two separate discs, and they crammed it into one Nintendo sixty four cartridge. Amazing. Somehow, yeah, because that was the thing people chose the CDs for, right? Because they they could store more than cartridges. Yeah, that was the draw. That was why so many corporations. That's why PlayStation went with CDs. That's weird. Yeah, it is. It is a little strange. Anyway. Uh, Resident Evil 1 is incredibly notable for, um, 
schlocky dialogue. <laughs> Ridiculous cutscenes. Bad cutscenes, schlocky dialogue, horrible gameplay. And uh <laughs> it, if I remember correctly, because I don't I don't remember playing that one, but I've seen footage of it. The cutscenes are actually done by real people. Like they, some of the cutscenes. They yeah. look like teenagers reenacting things in the forest. Yeah, yeah, basically. It looks it looks like It a, looks like Blair Witch Project. It looks like oh no, you're giving you're giving it way too much credit. It <laughs> looks like a schlocky 1980s movie made by film students. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. Like the beginning of the game, in the cutscene, it shows all of the different people that will be in the game, and like Wesker's like combing his hair back. Yeah. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. We'll just gloss over Resident Evil 1. Since neither of us really played that one. It, neither of us really played it. I played the GameCube remake, but that's like almost a different thing entirely. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just go to Resident Evil 2. For the time, that was a very impressive game. I remember being impressed by it, but it was not my genre. It was not my preferred game. I absolutely loved it. I mean, granted, when I, when I played... <laughs> When the Resident Evil 2 remake came out in, when was that, 2017? A while ago, yeah. Yeah, when the Resident Evil 2 remake came out, I remember seeing, like, the they, were, they showed, like, trailers for it or whatever. And I remember watching those and being like, I want to see what the big deal is. That looks exactly like it did when I played it. <laughs> your, uh, your memory had distorted it. Yeah, because, like, I remember it being, like, these amazing graphics. And then you go back and watch it, or, oh, you, play no. the, or you play the Resident Evil 2 remake and put the Leon 98 skin on, <laughs> and it looks so bad. Yeah. It's a mo- he is a monster. Mm-hmm. It's just a weird low poly monster running around. Anyway, PlayStation One characters, Resident Evil, and Metal Gear Solid, etc. Anything that tried to be realistic like that, the characters don't actually have faces. They don't have faces, and their hand is usually made of like three shapes. It's a triangle for three fingers, a, a, a square for one finger, and then another square for their thumb. <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. Yep. Because that's what you had to do for the PlayStation. Resident Evil 2 was the first one I ever played. And for the time, it was incredibly advanced because all of the, like, like we said before, all the cutscenes, with the exception of like the in-game cutscenes where it's, Jill, don't open that door. That was the first game, though. That was the first game. In Resident Evil 2, all of the cutscenes were 3D rendered. Were they rendered? I can't, or they were, were they in-engine? They were all, they were pre-rendered. Were they? They were pre-rendered to fit everything onto the disc. Oh, that must be why they redid them for the remake. Yes. So they were pre-rendered, and then also all of the backgrounds in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 1 were all pre-rendered as well. They were all static images. They were all static images, and then the characters were put on top of them. And the reason for doing that was to save on processing power. Mm Mm-hmm. Which worked very well. It meant that you could have these very detailed... (laughs) Photorealistic humanoid characters... Well, no, I meant you could have these very detailed backgrounds. Oh, yeah. And then you could save on processing power, so you're not dropping frames every three seconds when you try to move somewhere else. But it didn't also mean that you had to hide all the loading screens behind when you would go through doors. Which is just a door with a black background. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Resident, one of the things that I really liked about Resident Evil 2 was that you got not only... Not only did you get a playthrough for Claire and a playthrough for Leon, but then you also got Scenario B for... Claire and scenario B for Leon, which was basically like what the other character was doing while you were playing as the first character. Yeah, I guess if I had to describe it to somebody who didn't know about it, I'd say there is two characters and a campaign for each of them. And then there is also a second campaign for each of them where it changes some of the details and kind of distorts the story a bit just to give you a slightly different experience. Yeah, I remember playing Resident Evil 2 for the first time and just basically being like, Oh my god, there's scenario B for Claire? I had no idea. It's like four games in one! Kind of, yeah. So it was that was very impressive for the time. I really liked that. Whenever when I played that game for the first time, it was very tense mm-hmm. for me. It was tense. It was a lot of ammo conservation, th- having to think ahead of, well, a boss might be coming up later, so do I really want to waste ammo on these zombies? And when you would randomly get a critical headshot, their whole head would go Bleh! and explode. So And you, you go, all right, I just saved five more bullets for the final battle. Yeah, exactly. It was just everything was great. Like when you when you I remember being proud of the fact that I beat the final boss in less than 30 seconds. I wasn't like speedrunning it or anything, but as a filthy casual, I just remember being like, Yeah, I did it! I beat him in 30 seconds. A lot of the time playing those games. 
you would have to restrict what you're bringing with you. Yeah, you have like four slots of carrying capacity. Yeah, oh my god. Which it's, is incredibly frustrating, and I, I would say it's a valid criticism of those games, is they don't let you bring things, so you have to backtrack so much. But at the same time, you might find yourself in a corner, surrounded by a couple zombies, you got four bullets, and you gotta figure out, okay, I got four bullets, which is which might be enough to take out one of these guys, or maybe I could stun two of them and run past them. It, it it really required you to think about that. Mm -hmm. Going off of what you said, in Resident Evil 1, playing on hard mode was playing as Chris. Because Chris only had four inventory spots. Yeah. I think Jill it, had six. Yeah, Jill had six. Chris could only carry four things. I think one of them was mandated to be a lighter. Yeah. I, in Resident Evil 2, I think, I forget what Claire's item was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Leon's was a lighter, uh, implying that Leon smoked, which is why they have the line in Resident Evil 4... Where he says, "Do you? I have just one very important question. You got to smoke." And Leanne says, "I got gum," because they're implying that he quit smoking. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was a little like side joke that they did. I oh, I never really figured that out. It's a little subtle thing, right? Yeah, there. it's a little subtle thing. It's like he doesn't have he doesn't have a smoke. He used to have a lighter, and now he carries gum. And when people ask him for a smoke, he says, "I got gum," because it's supposed to be a nicotine gum. Yeah. I see. Or just gum in general. That's sure. Because sure. a lot of people try to quit smoking by just chewing regular gum. All right. Man, I love that game. That game was so much fun. Since neither of us played three, what did you think of Zero? They made a prequel. Oh, geez. Yeah, well, why don't we talk about like the other, like the other, the lesser known Resident Evils really I, quick before we I could, but there's like 18 or 30 different spin-offs, so I We can we can we can discuss the ones that we actually like tried. Resident Evil Zero, did did you ever play it? I have not played any spin-off Resident Evil games. I played Resident Evil Zero. I thought it was a really interesting concept. I like that they tried to do something with uh Rebecca Chambers because she basically gets swept under the rug. And nobody ever remembers her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hesitate to go into the plot and talk about the characters because there's a lot of characters in this series. It's not following one character's journey through the entire thing. No, it's... Resident Evil 1 follows Chris and Jill and Wesker and Barry, and then 2 follows Chris's sister, and then Leon, and there's Sherry Burke, and there's a doctor, and then Resident Evil 3 introduces Carlos. It, it just goes... Oh, Resident Evil 3 also has Jill in it, but not, not Chris. Chris isn't in Resident Evil 3, like, but Jill is. Yeah, see, it gets really complex. You start talking about the stuff. and So anyway, Resident Evil Zero follows uh, Sherry Birkin and uh, some guy who was a prisoner. I forget what his name is. Doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. He never shows up again. Uh, Resident Evil Zero was made for the GameCube, and I think it came out after the Resident Evil 1 remake. It tried something really interesting, which was character swapping. You could, at any point, switch between whatever the guy's name was Mr. Prisoner, mm -hmm. and Rebecca Chambers. Right, it's like, just like Donkey Kong 64. You could just instantly switch between the two of them, which oh, meant that... Well, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not like uh, Donkey Kong 64 then. You don't have to go back to the barrel every time? Yeah, you didn't have to go back to the barrel. I think you could just instantly switch between the two of them, which meant that you could... There were ways... You had to solve specific puzzles because it would be... Actually, I just thought of a really good way to describe the Resident Evil... The early Resident Evil games for people who've never played them. They're basically escape rooms. Oh, yeah, that's that's a pretty good way to describe it. They're basically it. escape rooms with zombies. With zombies, yeah. Yeah. And occasionally, like, plant monsters and other zombie or dogs. Or giant frogs with huge claws. Uh, zombie sharks. Zombie sharks, yep. They would basically be in, like, two different escape rooms, and sometimes one would have an item that the other one needs, and the other one would have an item that, the, uh, that one needs, and you would have to, like, put them in item boxes or put them in, like, a chute so it drops down to the other character. They did a lot of interesting things, but I'm going to say, having played Resident Evil Zero, I'm not a fan of the character swapping. I would have rather they just made it like Resident Evil 2. Yeah, the reception was pretty mediocre. Yeah, wasn't great. Code Veronica was another entry in the series. But it, wasn't, it wasn't numbered. It was just called Code Veronica because of some legalese things between uh, Capcom and Nintendo. Oh, we'll do exclusive Nintendo games. We won't have any non-numbered games, so they released this game, and they called it uh, Co Veronica. It's not numbered. It's, it's it's not a main series game. It's just a it's oh, side game. But it is a main series game. It though. basically is, yeah. It's essentially a main series game, but it didn't get a number because Capcom wanted to uh, give Nintendo all the numbered things. Ah. You get Resident Evil Zero. You get Resident Evil 1 Remake. You get Resident Evil 4. These are all Nintendo exclusives. We're going to give you Co Veronica, don't worry. Code Veronica was for PlayStation 2. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Oh, basically Capcom had done an agreement with Nintendo. Yeah. That they were going to... Main series games are exclusive to Nintendo. Okay. Um, Code Veronica came out 
the same year as Resident Evil Survivor. Did you ever play that one? I told you, I have not played any of these other dumb spinoff games. Resident Evil Survivor was a first-person on-rails light gun shooter for the PlayStation. Guess how well it was received. It's obviously not well received because it did not receive a remake. Survivor was released as a light gun game. Okay. But it wasn't on rails. It was an off-rails light gun game. I don't know how you were supposed to control it because the light gun version only came out in Japan and Europe. The North American version didn't have the light gun because Columbine had happened this right before it came out. Oh my goodness. So they removed the light gun compatibility and you had to use a controller. <laughs> like, okay. You had to use one of the sticks to move and the other stick to aim. So the cursor would just fly around the screen to aim the... It, yeah, it wasn't good. It doesn't sound like it'd be fun. No, it wasn't enjoyable. Um, I didn't really care for playing it. It received very unfavorable views. Yeah, wasn't great. Mm -hmm. uh, you played Code Veronica. What came out after Co uh, Resident Evil? Oh, Resident Evil Gaiden, which came out for the Game Boy Color. Mm -hmm. uh, where you play as Barry Burton. Uh, okay. Do you know how Gaiden ends? I don't know. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. I'm sorry. I don't care about these. I barely care about the Resident Evil series anymore. And I don't care about these shitty little spinoffs. How do you not care about the Resident Evil series? It's a they, great series. It's fucking trash. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah, I hate them. <laughs> wow. Big reveal from Mike. Okay, maybe I don't hate them. I find them very bland. And I don't care about these dumb PlayStation 1 knockoffs that... Have been lost to the annals of history because they were so awful. Gaiden is not for the PlayStation 1. It is for the Game Boy Color. Oh, thank you for enlightening me. I need to criticize it properly. And the big reveal at the end is that Leon is actually a clone! Ah! Ah! I can't believe they didn't mention that in any of the subsequent sequels. Yeah, it's not canon. Oh, no! <laughs> Then in 2002, they made the Resident Evil remake, which uh, Resident Evil remake and Resident Evil Zero, which I think we can we can talk about really quickly. Did you ever play the remake? Hey, here's an idea. Uh, fuck you, stop skipping over Code Veronica. Mike absolutely loved Code Veronica. It's his favorite game of all time. I do. I enjoy it so very thoroughly. It's been a good 20 years since I've played it at this yeah. point. She played again. Oh, I wouldn't want to pervert pervert the memory of it or anything. I think I, I think. Uh, I think it's, you should play it again. It's perfect in my mind, and I'd hate to do anything to ruin that. I didn't really play Code Veronica. No. I played a bit of it. You've missed out, my friend. Oh, have I really? Yes. The game that you haven't played in 20 years. I've missed out, huh? Just because I haven't played it in so long doesn't mean it's bad. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why don't you just give me, give, me, give me a taste. Give me a taste of what the plot of... Give me a little teaser of what the plot of Resident Evil Code Veronica is. Okay, it's very complex, but here, let me simplify it for you. Okay. Uh, you're in an area with a lot of rooms, and you're trying to find keys to unlock other rooms, and sometimes there are zombies coming after you, and you have uh -huh. to shoot those zombies. Uh-huh. And then the game ends. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. I know you end up in Antarctica. Yes. Um, I know that there's a, there's a couple twins that are horny for each other. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're getting into the nitty-gritty of the details. We're talking about the antagonist of that game and everything. Yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that. That's exactly <laughs> what I was about to do. I was about to do that really <laughs> annoying laugh. Um, I remember them. Uh, I remember that there was a character named Steve Burnside, mm -hmm. I think. Amazing that you haven't played this game and you have such distinct memory of all the characters and the plot and stuff. I have played this game. I just never beat it. No, oh, why yeah. not? Got stuck in Antarctica. I don't even think I got to Antarctica. I couldn't stand Steve Burnside. <laughs> that was the problem. You didn't appreciate this character that kept helping you out through the entire game? Oh God, I hated him. No. I absolutely hated him. It's, it's great. Hey, Claire, I made it to the other side, and I saved him over future use. I think that game may have actually been more progressive than we give it credit for, because you got to experience what it's like... Being a young teenage woman who is constantly sexually harassed every 20 minutes. I wouldn't say she's teenage. She's probably in her 20s in that game. Yep. Still. Yeah, but yeah, you get to be a young woman constantly sexually harassed by a really annoying Canadian boy. I don't even know if he's Canadian or not. I think he is. Because I think he says sorry. Well, he says a lot of things weird. I think he says sorry several times, which implies that he's Canadian. He, I don't know. Yes, maybe. Sure. 
when I think of Resident Evil Code Veronica, I, one, immediately think of how much I fucking hate Steve Burnside, <laughs> and two, think of the part where you find, spoiler alert, the part where you find Steve's dad, who's been turned into a zombie, and Claire's like, Steve, you have to shoot him, and he goes, I can't! <laughs> With that exact cadence and tone, I can't! <laughs> It makes me hate him so much. I can't stand him. For somebody like me who loves ridiculous over the top. You love corny. schlock. Oh, that's hilarious. You, oh man, you love schlocky comedies. And I will, I will admit that I also like schlocky comedies. Mm -hmm. But because the first time I played Resident Evil 2, that game was fucking scary. Oh yeah, and the, for the time, yeah, definitely. If you're 13 years old and you're playing... It was the scariest game for its time, yes. Yeah, it was terrifying. So yeah, because of that, it's like, oh yeah, Resident Evil is supposed to be serious. Like, uh, it's a serious game. Mm -hmm. It's a serious game for... And it isn't fucking a serious... It isn't a serious game. No. Not only that, but the gameplay was also better than the PlayStation 1. It was still poorly controlled and everything, but... It's still, it's still tank controls. Yeah, but... Oh, which we didn't even discuss. Yeah, the early Resident Evil games were all... We call them tank controls. It's basically, you had two joysticks... If I remember correctly, you had to hold forward on both of the joysticks. No. Your movement was essentially controlled by the left stick, and your right stick was used for, like, aiming and oh, stuff like that. Oh, your right stick was used for moving left and right. So, unlike, unlike most games this day, this day and age, where your left control stick was used for moving forward, back, and then moving side to side. Strafing. Yeah, strafing. If you hit left on that stick, you would turn. So... Your movement was all controlled by your left stick. You could only move forward and backward. You could turn yourself to orient yourself, but you could only move forward and backward. The control scheme would change depending on where the camera was. So, because the camera would be in different places. So sometimes you would come into a room and the camera's on the north side of the room, looking south. Other times the camera's on the east side of the room, looking west. And if you did that other dynamic control camera... You would run into a room, you'd be holding forward on the control stick, and once the camera would change, now your character thinks that you're trying to run right. I so you just start swiveling and going a different direction. I really pity anybody who's not played these games trying to understand what the hell we're talking oh, about. Oh god, it's like, it's, it's, it's terrible. I'm, I, I realize that this is just like baffling, but early Resident Evil controls were kind of a nightmare. Yes, they drove like, the characters drove like forklifts. Yeah. In the most simple way to explain it, they drove... As if they were forklifts. So it was it was very bad. It wasn't until... If I recall correctly, it wasn't until Resident Evil 6 that you got the option to aim and move at the same time. I believe so, yeah. I think it was Resident Evil 6. I can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, when you wanted to shoot at something, you had to stop moving, hold the aim button, mm -hmm. and then aim. And in Resident Evil 1, 2... Three, Code Veronica, and yeah, I think I I think one through Code Veronica. Your your aiming options were straight forward, up at a forty five degree angle, and down at a forty five degree angle. Yes, that was how you aimed in that game. You could aim up, which is gonna make your character aim at a forty five degree angle, mm -hmm. and then wait for the zombie to get close enough and put his head where you're aiming your gun. Yeah, <laughs> the controls were ridiculous. It was completely ridiculous. Just pity, pity us elderly gamers, for we have been through. <laughs> when I die, I'll go to heaven because I've spent my time in hell. Resident <laughs> Evil One, not, Resident Evil Two, nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> We've done our time. Yeah, it was man, it was bad. So okay, back to Code Veronica. Yes, um, I played a little bit of it. That one has Claire and Chris in it. Yes. And I think they mention Leon, but I don't think he's in that game. Right. Again, I don't want to get too much into the characters because we're gonna we're bouncing around between games. The characters there's... bounce all over the place. Resident Evil is very famous for basically adding a new character in every game and then having a character that's been in the previous games. So like, there's probably a good twenty main protagonists, a good ten or so main antagonists. Like 20 or 30 secondary characters in a whole there's, slew. There's not that many. You say that, but I don't know. Well, if there are, they all die. <laughs> yeah, okay. If, they, if, we're, if we're not allowed to include characters that end up dying, yeah, okay. Do you have anything else to say about Code Veronica? It's the best. How can you, how can you why not do you, love Why it? do you think it's the best? I don't, actually. I thought it was the best for its time. 
Okay. I thought it was, back when the PlayStation 2 was the system to own, I would say at the time that was the best the, the best Resident Evil game. Okay. But we've come a while since then. We have come a long way since then. But in the same generation, it also came out Resident Evil 1's remake. Yep. That was, uh, that was the remake was in 2002 and it came out the same year as Resident Evil 0. Uh, let's talk about the remake for a little bit. Yeah, because I, even though I say Code Veronica is the best of that that time of games, you'd say probably the remake is best. I think the remake is best, yeah. In, in that era, if we're talking like PlayStation 2, GameCube... Uh, original Xbox. Original Xbox. I don't think Xbox got a Resident Evil game until 4. Yeah, probably not, actually. Actually, no, it might not even have been until 5. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, the Resident Evil remake for GameCube was really good. I... Honestly, graphic-wise, it still holds up. I think it still looks good. Yes, I will definitely say that once you had Code Veronica, I'd say Code Veronica is good, but it shows its age. But the remake actually still looks the really remake, good. For a 20-year-old game, yeah. it still looks good. That was the part where Resident Evil games no longer looked like complete ass. Yeah, Resident Evil, Z- or Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 0, both, they started looking amazing. Resident Evil... Don't confuse people talking about Resident Evil Remake and just referring to it as Resident Evil 2. Sorry. Remake and Resident Evil Zero. This is why it's so complex to talk about Resident Evil. Because the games are uh, 1, 2, 3, Code Veronica, go back to 0, Remake 1, then Remake 2, well, then we had 4. I'm going to add to the confusion. Are you ready? Then you're going to talk about Gaiden. We're and... talking about the... Ma- I'm only going to talk about the main games. We, we've been only talking about the main games. I'm only going to talk about the main We're games. We're still losing this our is, minds. This is in order of release. Don't Re- read the Wikipedia article. It's just going to piss me off. Resident Evil. Resident God Evil damn 2, you. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Resident Evil Code Veronica. Resident Evil Remake. Resident Evil Zero. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil Revelations. Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil Revelations 2. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Resident Evil 2 Remake. Resident Evil 3 Make. And Resident Evil Village. Cool. That was boring. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I forgot. It's not Resident Evil 6, 7, and 8. It's Resident Evil 6. Uh, it's Resident Evil 6, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, and Resident Evil 8 Village. Resident Evil 6. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So I didn't even call it Resident Evil Eight Village. I just called it Resident Evil Village. But it was. But the the village was highlighted to make it look like eight. The color scheme was a little different, but its official title is still Resident Evil Village. Oh, it's Resident Evil Eight Village. Re- it's Resident Evil Village. It's Resident Evil Eight Village. I swear to God, it's it is. It's just Resident Evil Village. All right, fine. It's Resident Evil Village. I told you. Fine. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> I told this game. This is almost as bad as as Final Fantasy. At least Final Fantasy is stabilized now. No, it hasn't. It has. It hasn't. What do you mean it has it? The last three games were 14, 15, 14, and 13. Well, actually, it was 13 Dash 2. This isn't about Final Fantasy. We're not talking about that stupid game series that's not consistent. We're talking about Resident Evil where they can't even get numbers on their games in the proper order. Yes. Anyway, talking about the GameCube remake of Resident Evil 1. Yes, because that's not, that's not confusing. Please, let's keep talking about that one game. There's, this is the one game we're talking about right now. If we were just talking about like three or four games in a series at a time and we do like an in-depth analysis, I wouldn't be so frustrated. We're trying to talk about like 30 different games and some of them are remakes that are just titled the exact same thing. Yeah. Yep. That game, they went back to the... The reason it looks so good and like still holds up now yes. is because they went back to pre-rendered backgrounds. Oh, Oh, okay. I wasn't aware of that. That was how they managed to fit, because GameCube used those tiny little discs. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Little baby discs. GameCube used those little baby discs, and Resident Evil 4 GameCube came on two discs. Ah, I forgot about that, too. Yep. So, uh, once you went down into the laboratory, that was disc two. Wow, all right. Um, Because it came on two discs, the way they the way they managed to fit everything on two discs was through pre-rendered backgrounds. So that's how everything still looks good. Jill had boob jiggle physics <laughs> on GameCube. Okay, on, on GameCube of all things. They were they, and on a Nintendo the, console. They were very tasteful. Very tasteful boob jiggle physics. It was the right amount that it would have been. And I believe, if I remember this correctly, that was the first one that had unlockable costumes. Uh, I know where this is going. It's not going anywhere. It's just that was the first Resident Evil that had unlockable costumes, oh, which has oh, since become a staple of the series. You don't know where this is going, do you? Because I distinctly re- remember you saying, wow, there's a lot of cutscenes where Jill falls over, and then you unlock her secret alternate outfit where you can see her panties when she falls over. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's if you give her the Resident Evil 3 outfit. And you go, whoa, now I know why there's so many cutscenes that are falling backwards. She falls over a lot. Ooh, I unlocked panty shots. With yeah, the alt- you kind of did. 
You kind of, you kind of, somebody at Capcom was, was pretty pervy. Yeah. Somebody named Zach was pretty pervy because he was so stoked about it too. Was I? I don't remember. You were a teenager. You were. Oh yeah. Well that, yeah, that's, I thought, I thought it was awesome too. I'm not I'm calling you out, but I mean, oh, I'm, okay. I'm right there yeah. with you. I mean, Hey man, I thought the, there were some female character models in Time Splitters 2 that had big old boobs and I was just like, no one can see you doing a face sack. I was making a, I was doing a lewd staring face. Ugh. Anyway, I, forgive us. It's we're new to the whole podcast scene. Not like we've been doing YouTube videos the last six years. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, there were some female character models in Time Splitters that I saw and was as a teenager, and I was like, "Wow." Well, we can talk about all the video game characters that aroused us when we were teenagers. Uh, it's time for Zach's top ten hottest video game babes. Just, what are we a fucking? <laughs> what are we a website from two thousand and two? Quick aside: name your top three female video game characters. <laughs> Spring this on you. Uh, top three female video game characters? Yeah, the ones that you found the most attractive when you were like a kid. Like, oh my god, oh my god, Tifa's up there. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> All right, let's move on then. Sheva. Sheva. Hell yeah, Sheva. Yeah, Sheva's like, Sheva's up there. We'll get to we'll get to Sheva. We'll get to her. She's the best part of Resident Evil 5. The only good part of Resident Evil. No, I'm just kidding. Um, How ironic that, Re- that Sheva's being considered the best part of Resident Evil 5. Uh, Resident Evil GameCube remake. Until they came out, until newer ones came out later, that was probably the one I put the most time in. Mm-hmm. And yeah, on the topic of being like graphically impressive, if you look at the models for the guns in that game, or just the models of anything, they did such a good job modeling anything in that game. Even the guns, like you can see down the barrel of the guns in those games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's really good. They did a very good job on that remake. You still have tank controls, though. Yeah, that's what's holding that game back from being a good game still, is that it's it's still got those rough tank controls, and we've definitely moved past them now. There was, uh... Oh, man. Yeah, the Resident Evil GameCube remake is what made me love the Benelli M4 shotgun. Because <laughs> I'm such a freaking nerd. Actually, that one might have been the Benelli M3. Anyway, the Resident Evil game is what made me love the Benelli series of shotguns, because mm-hmm. I, remember, I remember being... A, a teenager playing that game and being like, oh my God, I love the shotgun. It's in this game. It's so cool looking. And like flipping through gun, like these gun buyers guide, they used to have, they still do, but they used to have like the gun gun buyers guide for that year. Mm-hmm. And it would have just every gun in it. And you look up the Benelli. Oh yeah, the Benelli. And I would, I remember flipping through that until like, Pausing the game or like opening the model <laughs> of that gun in the game and then flipping through the magazine until I found that gun. And it's a book that's like thicker than the freaking Bible. <laughs> yep. All right. Flipping through it until I found that gun. Th- this is like for people that are interested. This is like how I got into guns because I would play video games and find guns that I thought were cool. And then look that look up what the real world version of that gun was mm-hmm. and then before com- the Internet. Try and spot the differences. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <sighs> what was I saying? Yeah, it had a bunch of really. Uh, the remake had um, like the one mean zombie mode where uh, Forrest would like. No one knows who Forrest is. Forrest is one of the one of the stars Alpha Team members. He dies and he has a grenade launcher on him. Um, you could just say a zombie is chasing you. Yeah, a zombie is chasing you around. If he touches you, he explodes and you die. Yep, which is a pretty funny thing. There was, I think, there was another mode where the zombies were just invisible. Which is horrifying. Oh, yeah. Uh, there were a bunch... They added a bunch of, like, impossible game modes. Resident Evil 1, the remake, has bad controls, but it still holds up. If you can adapt to those controls, if you can work with those controls, it's still a good game. A st- it's a scary game. It'll it'll scare the pants off you. Yeah. It's got some decent jump scares and some horror oh, moments. Oh, man. You know what I just remembered about the early Resident Evil games? Hmm. When you wanted to save having to bring ink ribbons. We didn't really talk about that, but yeah, yes, you didn't you didn't have unlimited saves in that game. The reason for the limited amount of saves was because the early memory cards could only hold a certain amount of saves. That's a stupid justification. So they did something where you had a limited amount of saves, but yeah, that's incredibly stupid. Yeah, for anybody that's never played those games, basically you could only save if you had the ink ribbon item. And there's a limited amount of those you can find in the game. So And you can't save whenever you want. You have to go to that this is why they called them save rooms. Because you had to go to a specific room that generally had an item box, which connected to every other item box in the game, and a typewriter. Yep, the typewriter is where you saved. 
if you were playing these games and you found like five or six ink ribbons and you were very bad about the game, so you were being very nervous, very cautious, maybe you'd go out, shoot a zombie or two, run back and save, do it again over and over, you'd burn through your ink ribbons and then you wouldn't be able to save until you get far enough in the game to find another ink ribbon. Which y- you could, again, you could soft lock yourself out of things. Uh, I remember reading on early internet forums, people being like, I don't know what to do. I saved 12 hours ago and I had ran out of ink ribbons and now I can't make it any further. It's like they keep dying at like the final boss, mm. but because they saved so far back. <laughs> yeah. One of the other, and that was, that was in every Resident Evil. Every Resident Evil up to that point had ink ribbons mm-hmm. that you had to save with. One of the other mechanics that the remake had on GameCube was Crimson Head Zombies. I don't know if you remember these. That was actually a novel concept because in the previous games, generally, if you shot a zombie, they either stayed dead or they were just pretending to be dead. And if you got too close, they'd bite your ankle. So Resident Evil Remake had these zombies that were called Crimson Heads. And this was the first game that had did this. I thought it was a super cool mechanic, but it is as aggravating as fuck. So as I was saying, in the previous games, if you killed a zombie, they generally stay dead. And then in Resident Evil Remake you would come back into a room where a zombie had died, and if you hadn't burned the body, if you had just left them for dead, they would come back as a stronger enemy at full health, called Crimson Heads, because I think they were a little redder, weren't they? The, the, basically, their whole head would be covered in blood. Yes. So yeah, that's why they were called Crimson Heads. The problem with burning the zombies is that it required resources to do it. You had to have a jerry can filled with kerosene <laughs> and a lighter. If you're playing as Chris, you already have the lighter. Mm-hmm. But you don't have a lockpick, and you only have four item spots. Mm-hmm. If you're playing as Jill, you have six item spots, but now you have to carry a lighter and a jerry can. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the jerry can is only good for three zombies. Again, going back to having no carrying capacity in those games. So you got to go back and forth and back and forth to the save room every, every time. It did become a very interesting resource management thing where some of the same rooms had more kerosene in them. But again, it probably was only like three or four uses of kerosene. Mm -hmm. So it became a resource management thing of once you knew the crimson heads were a thing, it became, okay, do I think I'm going to have to come back here? Because if I'm not going to have to come back here, I'm not going to burn any of these zombies. Yeah. If I think I'm going to have to come back here, I will burn them. And granted, they can't follow you into certain rooms. So it becomes, do I think I'm good enough to be able to A, run from this zombie that is now faster and more deadly and has more health? Mm -hmm. Or do I risk using these items to eliminate this zombie from play? Yep, it's a strategic decision, and you're not always going to make the the right decision if it's your first time playing. It was very very interesting. And then the thing with the... um, yeah, I thought the Crimson Heads were a very interesting add-on. It could potentially be very frustrating, but you, you get used to it. You say you get used to it, but I mean, you get you could get frustrated with it and not get used to it because you stop playing. Yeah, that's so, true. I'm pretty sure I played Code Veronica before I played the remake. Mm-hmm. Those came, those came out around the same time, the same generation at least. Yeah, I played Code Veronica. It had some of the similar tropes, similar problems, but the protagonist had a decent amount of carrying capacity. I remember she had, uh, I think, eight slots, maybe ten slots. I think it, she had eight, yeah. It was significant, and you didn't have to carry around a bunch of plot-critical items most of the time, because you, you find it, you'd use it pretty soon, and then you'd move on. The... But then I went back to playing Remake, and again, you've got a limited amount of carrying capacity. Some I think, Chris has, what, four slots? Chris then. has four slots, Jill has six, if I recall correctly. And like you're saying, one of those slots is going to be at least a handgun or a gun, Second slot is going to be the ammo for that gun. and then Third is for a healing item. Third is for at least one healing item. And then fourth, I guess, there's like four or five items you need to be juggling. You need a crank, you need a gemstone, you need four or five different keys. And each of those things takes up a single slot. So I found the carrying capacity incredibly restrictive for that game. And I hated it. I absolutely hated it. One of the reasons I don't go back and play Resident Evil these days. That, that's, I that is... I'm not going to go back and play Resident Evil Remake because I, that that's probably the, my biggest complaint about it. That is, the remake was basically, they remade the first Resident Evil. They redid all the cutscenes. They did the voice acting. They, they remade the whole game, but they still kept the mechanics basically the same. Yep, still tank controls. Still tank controls. You still have limited inventory space, so on and so forth. Um, that is the biggest problem with it. I've tried to go back and play the remake. Mm-hmm. And it's it's hard it's 
hard even for me. And I'm like a huge resident. I love Resident Evil. It's it's hard for me to go back and do yeah. it. And it's not like the backtracking didn't serve a single purpose because it made sense. You'd, you'd go somewhere, you'd realize you needed an item, you'd run back, you'd get it. You'd get familiar with these hallways. You'd be running back and forth, back and forth. And then on your 17th run through the hallway, something unexpected would happen. A dog would jump through the window and scream and bark. And yep. gla- everyone remembers that because it happens to everyone. It happens pretty early in the, in the first game. You go through an area, there's a, there's a save room. You've exited and entered this save room hundreds of times by this point. Mm-hmm. You get to a certain point in the game and suddenly there is a hunter outside of the save room, which is a giant... They look like big frogs with huge claws. It's a giant monster. Yeah, there's a big old monster right outside the save room. And he's just there now, so now you have to deal with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, there's also a door right next to the save room that if you go through it the wrong way a certain amount of times, it breaks and you can never go through it again. Yeah. That's why I say like the early Resident Evils, because they're so dependent on plot critical items and backtracking, they are very much like a point and click adventure game. Mm-hmm. It is very much like the early point and click adventure games are wild, man. They're, they're freaking weird. It was like... I, you don't have to tell me. I'm even, familiar with them. Even the early Resident Evil games, like early video games are just wild in general. Like people hadn't really figured out how to do certain things in video games yet. Mm-hmm. Playing early video games is kind of like watching movies from the 60s where people hadn't really figured out how to make an engrossing movie yet. Mm-hmm. Like they had, but there are some people that are just making like stuff that's weird. Yeah. And the controls are always all over the place, too. Even back at the time, I realized I didn't like the remake. I was kind of over it at that point. And the only reason I beat the remake is because I found a glitch where you could duplicate grenade oh, launcher ammo. The infinite ammo, gl- the infinite grenade launcher ammo glitch. Yeah, that bro- that breaks the whole fucking game. So, yeah. It makes the game so easy. It does. And that's really the only... I hate backtracking in that game so much so that I gave myself 290 fire grenades and mm-hmm. i just basically went around if you're gonna restrict my ammo my carrying capacity very well i'm only gonna carry one gun it's gonna be a grenade launcher and so it's gonna burn all the enemies i don't have to carry any kerosene or anything oh my god you know what else is really frustrating about the resident evil game actually this is about all of them is your ammo capacity has stacks in resident evil remake the spare magazines held 15 rounds so basically, every 15 bullets would take up another slot of inventory space. Yes. Every 15 bullets takes up another inventory space. Mm-hmm. So you could carry, what, nine in your gun and then 15 in another slot. Oh, no, you carry 15 in your gun, 15 in another slot, and then 15 in the third slot. So now you have three slots for just <laughs> ammo. And even if you're trying to be tactical, I'm only going to have one for my gun and one for my ammo and then, Mo- you'd be, and then you'd leave the room you're like okay i've done this perfectly i've got one slot for gun one slot for ammo and you'd run around and you pick up oh here's some ha- here's more handgun ammo that's going in the third slot oh here's some shotgun ammo that's going in the fourth slot and i'm back to carrying capacity better go back to the shop and drop it all off keep in mind that most zombies will drop in anywhere from one to six shots yeah, you can't really you can't really predict when they're gonna do it's it. It's just it, it could be any it could be any of those. You might get a you might get a critical headshot on the first one, or you might dump six rounds into him and then he finally drops. And then you go over to him and he start biting your ankle because he's not actually dead yet. Ha ha. Another really frustrating thing. Really, we're only talking about things that we didn't like. Another really frustrating. No, we're not. Thing, I'm talking about the good stuff too. Another really frustrating thing about the early Resident Evils is if you didn't pick something up, they. On the map, you would get a map, which, by the way, you had to find a map of the area. Yep. You couldn't just, like, write it down on a piece. Like, in Silent Hill, the map would update as you progress through the level. Mm -hmm. So, like, you go up to a door, you try to open the door, it doesn't open, and then now the door has a little X over it on the map. Right. But the rest of the map is grayed out. Anyway, Resident Evil, you had to find a map of the entire area. Mm -hmm. It's an item lying around somewhere in the mansion. You find it, and then you have a map. Now you have a map. When you look at the rooms, the rooms either show up red, indicating there's still items there, or blue, indicating you have picked up every item in that room. But it doesn't tell you what items are in the room. Mm -hmm. So if you are running through an area, your inventory is completely full, and you spy an ink ribbon on the table. You go to pick it up, but you can't because your inventory is full. Mm -hmm. So you leave it there. And then if you have brain filled with bees, like I do... You forget that there was an ink ribbon in that room because you run to like six other rooms to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And now you're going, oh, 
I knew there, I know there's an ink ribbon somewhere back here. I need that ink ribbon to save. Where the hell is it? So you end up backtracking through 12 different rooms that are all highlighted red, trying to remember which room had the ink ribbon in it because your map doesn't tell you. Yeah. Anyway, Resident Evil Remake, I enjoyed playing it. I can't go back though. Yeah. It's one of those things, it's just, it's too hard for me to go back to. Mm-hmm. It did not age like a fine wine. It still looks amazing. It looks great. Unfortunately, it's not a movie. It's a video game, and you have to play it. Yes. Uh, Resident Evil Dead Aim? Which one is that? Resident Evil Dead Aim. I've heard of it. Oh, it's another light gun. It's not great. No, of course not. Resident Evil Outbreak has, in my opinion, the best intro music to any Resident Evil game ever made. The Resident Evil Outbreak theme song is a fucking masterpiece. Damn, I'm gonna have to listen to it later then. It's so good hmm. oh my god i i still listen to it to this day you know how long <laughs> i played resident Evil outbreak for maybe five minutes uh, about an hour and that was it <laughs> yeah that's all you the, need but the theme song is just fucking amazing all right resident Evil outbreak was a very experimental game that was an online multiplayer resident evil i think we're talking about dead aim no, it's talking about Outbreak. Okay. Dead Aim was another light gun shooter I'm game. I'm sorry, all these shitty spin-off movies yeah. they all get lumped together in my mind, apparently. Outbreak was an online multiplayer game for the PlayStation 2, which, if you don't know, if you didn't know the PlayStation 2 had online multiplayer, congratulations, neither did anybody else. I played PlayStation 2 online. You did? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, you were probably one of five people. I played Ratchet and Clank 3 online, actually. It had an mm. online game mode. I don't remember much about it. I know there was like a bunch of capture the bolt, capture the base kind of yeah. missions like that. The clearest memory I have from that game is one point where I got put into a map against one other person. It became a 1v1. I never played Halo or anything like this. Yeah. This is probably the closest I came to playing a Halo game where he got placed on the map or she had no idea. We didn't have the inner in talking or text or anything. Yeah, it's like, it would just say player one above yeah. your head. There was a player on the map there was a, and I was the player and we had like a sniper rifle. We each had a sniper rifle. So it was, it was a sniper standoff and we'd be hunting each other through the maps. And it's not a huge map, but yeah, it was actually very tense. So I remember that. And I can understand why people would enjoy things like that. I can understand from that experience why people enjoyed online gaming so much. But- Resident Evil Outbreak was a, a multiplayer. You could play it single player, but basically all of the AI was incredibly broken. It was multiplayer, I think up to four people. Mm. And you were all survivors trying to escape, I think, Raccoon City. Yeah, possibly. I think it was Raccoon City. You were all survivors trying to escape Raccoon City and not get killed by zombies. It, mm. was, it was decent. I think recently they kind of brought it back. I think they have a new one. But anyway, mm. glossing over that. So yeah. now we get to the big one. The one where everything changed. The one where literally everything changed, which is Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4, originally a GameCube exclusive game. That now has, I'm pretty sure, more versions than Skyrim does. It was revolutionary for its time, and it was very highly praised. And depending on who you ask, it is either the best thing that happened to Resident Evil or the worst thing that happened to Resident Evil. It Mike, what do you think it was? Well, seeing as how I can't go back to play all those older games, and I'd still love these games, I would say it's probably the best thing to happen to that series, I suppose. I love Resident Evil 4, but I think it was the worst thing to happen to Resident Evil. Oh no. Take say it ain't so, Zach. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> My problem with Resident Evil 4, we'll get into discussing the game itself in just a second. You can't have a problem with Resident Evil 4. It's got a 98% favorability Shut rating. Shut up, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I'm those You're 2%. <laughs> I am the 2%. Okay. Um, My problem with Resident Evil 4 is that up until this point, Resident Evil had been survival horror. Yes. And suddenly, it's an action-adventure shooter game. Thank God. No more ammo conservation. There's still ammo conservation because here's my fucking problem with it. Apparently, every single version other than the GameCube version, everybody's like, oh, it's got an adaptive difficulty. If you're doing better at the game, you'll get less ammo. But you know what that means? That means you just never fucking get ammo and all you get is money. So now I can't shoot anything because I have no fucking ammo. Well, then it's exactly like the games you love, Zach. It's ammo conservation. No problem. In a game where that's supposed to be an action adventure game where you're just shooting stuff left and right, all right, what, whatever, fine. Uh, it's, uh, I'm glossing over that. It's great. Honestly, Resident Evil 4 is great. It's an amazing game. Yeah. 
It I, is. I enjoyed it at the time, and I could still go back and play it. You it's can. Fun. You can still play it. It's still great. It is um, now an action game. You can aim your gun around in three sixty degrees. Can aim. You can actually aim! Not just 360, but also anywhere up and down. It's a complete sphere. The inventory isn't just four spaces. The inventory isn't garbage. The shotgun no longer takes up the same amount of space as a key. I don't think keys take up inventory space. Keys shouldn't take up inventory space. What a fascinating concept. Back in 2004 or whenever, they oh, invented man. key rings. I was in my job training in the military at the time, I AIT mm -hmm. and the rec center, uh, which is one of the few places that I could, that we were allowed to go like in off time or on the weekends, mm. I would go to the rec center and everybody else at the rec center would be, they had a bunch of game systems that you could check out. Mm -hmm. They were on a little rolling cart with a TV. I would get there and everybody else would check out the PlayStation and the Xbox. Mm -hmm. All of those would get checked out immediately. Of course. I would go there and they had two GameCubes. And nobody was ever checking out the GameCubes. I actually went and bought a copy of Resident Evil 4 because I was so <laughs> stoked about it. I bought a cop my own personal copy and my own personal memory card. And you rented the GameCubes? So I'd go rent the GameCube and play <laughs> Resident Evil 4 because they didn't have it on that. But I was I never had to worry about anybody taking the GameCube. Nice. Um, no one else wanted to play Pikmin or Sunshine. No, nobody else wanted to rent the GameCube. I remember, I think you told me while I was in AIT... There's a point in Resident Evil 4 where you have to take a boat across the dock <laughs> or you have to take a boat across the lake and you fight this thing that's basically, it's like a newt that's been horribly mutated. Yeah, I think I mentioned to you at one point, there's a boss fight if you do this, but if you shoot into the lake, you can skip the boss fight. Yeah, if you shoot into the lake five times, it's the boss Easter dies. Egg. Yes. I was like, oh, dang, because I hate fighting this boss. Like, I died several times on it. I was like, I hate fighting this boss. I'm going to skip him. Get to that part, shoot in the lake. He he comes out of the lake and fucking eats you. Yeah, it one shots you, yeah. It's Man, dead. I remember calling you back and just being like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> and just hanging up. <laughs> Resident Evil 4, uh, one of the other things that made it very interesting is it was the first Resident Evil that did not have zombies. Yes, Las they, Plagas. They were Las Plagas or a Ganados. So instead of having a, a virus infecting people, it was now a parasite. It wasn't a genetically engineered virus. It was a, I think, genetically engineered parasite. It may have been changed slightly, but it was one that they found under far underground. Yes. Yeah, because you find them mining for them later, and they brought them back. They brought them back from fossils like it was Jurassic fucking Park. <laughs> yes. So um, I don't know if that really makes that much of a difference, but instead of having melted flesh zombies coming at you, you just had people that were possessed, essentially. Yeah, and they would say, look behind you, or I'm behind you, idiot, and... I learned how to say a lot of things in Spanish because the zombies... The trust the ambassador. The, quote, zombies of that game spoke Spanish. Yeah. Because they were just the villagers possessed by parasites. Fun fact about that game, uh, because they were, they were Japanese and they didn't, they didn't know. They're just like, Spanish is Spanish. So all the voice actors they got were speaking Spanish with a Mexican accent. The Latin not American. Not a Spain accent. Yeah. <laughs> Because the game takes place in Spain, but everyone there speaks with a Latin American accent, yes. It's essentially like if I were running around in America screaming, Thou art about to die! Yeah, it would be... It, it's... For people that are Spanish, they they notice the difference. Yes. Uh, Luis's name is completely wrong. It would be Luis, not, not Luis. I think it actually has the accent above the I, too, yeah. Yeah, it's Luis, Luis. not Luis. Um, uh, Leon's an ignorant American. He doesn't know any better. He doesn't know any better. I had never played a game like that before. It was certainly a very unique take on Resident Evil, and uh, if it were just an, its own thing, it would still be a pretty amazing thing. Yeah, it was It was great. It's still, honestly, it still holds up. It's still a lot of fun to play. There are people still playing it now. Oh, yeah. It's It's just a great game. Uh, the plot isn't that great. The plot isn't... Well, uh, and honestly, the plot of the Resident Evil games has never really been its strong point. It was basically just the gameplay. The gameplay was leaps and bounds better. The, the plot is just kind of... Bleh. Like, who the fuck is this Krauser dude? Why do I care? Yeah. They're having a knife fight. That's kind of cool. I don't like the quick time events. There are some points in the game where you have to mash the button quickly to progress. That's There's annoying. a part at the very beginning of the game where the... the the villagers like push a big old rock and it rolls down the hill and tries to crush you. Mm. And basically no matter how fast you push the button, 
it just speeds up the cutscene. Yes. <laughs> so even if you have like Mach 3 thumb and you're pushing it at a rate that's absolutely incredible, your Leon just moves real, real fast and the boulder still moves at the exact same speed. It's Yeah, the whole thing is absurd. Uh, Leon is a simp. I'm gonna get into the plot of the things. Leon's still a simp for Ada in yeah, that game. Yeah. A woman that he met for, what, like three hours and suddenly decided that she was the one woman for him. Leon's got a fucking smart mouth on him in that game too. Oh, he's got a one-liner for everything. I love it. He's got a one-liner for literally everything. But that's it. That's that's what makes games memorable, the cheesy one-liners, because you remember them. We quote them all the time. Yeah. I feel like anything we can say about that game has been said already, because there have been so many, like, mini documentaries and things about that game and about how amazing it was. Yeah, it was an enjoyable experience. Really, really good game. They did so many things in that game that had not, that had not been done in a Resident Evil game or just in general before. You can shoot the dynamite out of guys' hands and oh, it yeah. blows up. Yeah, you can do that in Vegas too. <laughs> well, yeah, but Resident Evil 4 came out first. Yeah. It changed genres from being a survival horror game into an action horror game. But it was still terrifying at moments, especially because it's the first time you played games like that. When there's a giant guy screaming at you with a chainsaw revving. Holy crap, that scared the shit out of me the first time I played that game. And you, you close the door. sweaty palms in panic. And in previous Resident Evil games, you know, you go in through a, a door and separate rooms and you're safe. He just knocks the door down, chops it in half, and he's still screaming at you in your face. Yeah. And then, then it, it, was, it was beyond the fact that the zombies weren't just walk towards you in straight line. They would actually, the, the Ganados in 4 actually do flanking tactics they'd grab you they'd scream tactics to each other get behind him they'd throw hatchets at you yeah they had ranged attacks you would get to ones later that had freaking riot shields oh yeah yeah and you would have to shoot you would have to either like try to flank around them or destroy the riot shield to knock them over mm-hmm. when you have the president's daughter with you they would actively try to pick her up and carry her away <laughs> yeah they would try to distract you and then somebody else would just like run up and just pick her up and try to run off with her. <laughs> I'm not sure if they planned on having the enemies work together like that or if that's just separate AIs. Oh, it was definitely planned. Was like it, they did it on purpose. Were, were, were the AI conspiring with each other or did they all have their thing? Like you're the one that tries to capture the girl. That I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, it may have just felt like they were conspiring, but they were all just swarming you. What would you say is your biggest complaint about Resident Evil 4? Honestly, I would say my biggest complaint is that I didn't have quick weapon select, which might sound like a petty thing, but yeah. in that game, if you wanted to switch from your handgun to a shotgun, you'd have to open up the menu, go to your weapons, scroll over to your weapons, pick up the shotgun, select it, select equip, and now you're using the shotgun, which is why... When I go back and play that game, I do a handgun-only run. Mm -hmm. It's a little more challenging, of course, but if you never pick up the shotgun or the rifle, they don't start giving you rifle or shotgun ammo. Yes. So you, you just get a bunch of handgun ammo, and it's basically just a handgun shooter, and it works perfectly well. Yeah, I mean, even the base, the base model handgun isn't great in that game. But yeah, that does kind of kill the whole the flow of gameplay when every minute... Or 30 seconds, you're hitting start, down, 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 shotgun, select, equip, yeah, start, and then going back to shooting stuff. That kind of kills the flow of the game. Mm -hmm. I know most people's biggest complaint about Resident Evil 4 is Ashley, who is the president's daughter. A lot of that game is a bit of an escort mission, yes. Yeah. I honestly, I don't have that much of a problem with her. Because most of the time, she's just right there. She's just right behind you. And you don't really have to worry about her as much. If you're being mindful, she's, yeah. She can be annoying. Some of her voice lines get really grating. Leon! Yes. I'd say overall, I agree with you. She's not bad. She generally stays out of your line of sight. If you aim at her, she'll get behind you and try to stay out of your line of sight. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of times you have to escort her because... Uh, the recurring trope of that game is every time you risk her, she gets captured 10 minutes later anyway. Yeah. So she's not with you the majority of the game or anything. When she is with you, you can command her, hey, hide in that dumpster until I've cleared the entire area. Then come out and we'll continue along. Yeah. So for an escort mission game, it's not that bad. Generally, anytime you have to fight a major boss, she's not there. God, can you imagine trying to fight the fucking Rasputin looking motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, the with, barn. With her... In there? Yeah, the tight... Oh, 
then that would suddenly Resident Evil 4 has gone from one of the greatest games ever to one of the worst games ever. I, I could think of so many different games where you'd be fighting somebody and then your escort would die and you'd have to restart. What's your favorite handgun to use in that game? I don't, uh, I, I honestly don't remember. It's been a long time since I played that game. My favorite handgun to use is the Red 9. Okay. Which I, is the old, which is the old Mauser broom handle looking handgun. It has the highest damage out of any handgun, but the slowest reload time. Then it, that might be the one I use too. Whichever one has, well, actually maybe not because. I would think your, I think yours is probably the Blacktail. I don't know. Because Blacktail is largest capacity, fastest reload time, but it does about average damage. Possibly, because the way I used to play those games is I didn't always aim for the head and hope to blow up their head. I would sometimes try and aim for the knee and then knock them down and then knife them while they're on the ground. So mm -hmm. I guess whichever gun had the highest chance of knocking them to the ground would probably be the one I'd go for. One of, oh, um, one of the complaints I legitimately have about this game is that in the very, in the beginning of the game, it rewards you for attacking specific body parts. If you shoot someone in the leg, they'll like fall down onto one knee and it'll stun them for a second. Mm -hmm. You shoot them in the arm, they'll drop whatever they're holding. If you shoot them in the head, their head might explode or they'll get stunned and then you can run up and kick them. Mm -hmm. um, so it rewards you specifically for, for doing like headshots. Yeah. Because if you shoot them in the head, they just go blam and then they're immediately dead. But then later in the game, it gets to a point where if you shoot them in the head, their head can split open and a bunch of tentacles come out and start flipping all over the place. You know, so now the game is punishing you for shooting them in the head. I completely forgot about the tentacles and the parasites bursting out of the heads. Yes, they the do that. The first time that happened, holy shit, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, that was definitely inspired by the manga Parasite. Super cool. But yeah, the, the first time that happened scared the shit out of me. But then it gets it got to a point where... When I was playing the game, I didn't want to shoot people in the head anymore mm -hmm. because then those might come out and the things with the tentacles coming out of there are so much harder to kill. They they are definitely bullet sponges. Their health goes back up and then their weak point is going <laughs> and whipping all over the place. <laughs> yeah. However, you can't just kill them. If you have flashbangs and you throw a flashbang, they don't like bright light, so they immediately die. Yeah, but you're not always going to be carrying a bunch of those. Exactly. Minor complaint, those enemies sucked. They're still, they're really cool in the game. They're just, they're a pain to deal with. So are the regenerators. But once you get the night vision scope or once you get the thermal scope, the regenerators are true. We didn't talk about the regenerators yet. You're just running past through. But yeah, talking about the parasites, you shoot their head. You, you, you'd be like, all right, I got 10 bullets left. You'd shoot their head, try to kill them. And then the parasite would sprout out and you go, oh man. And you'd put the rest of your rounds into that parasite and it would still keep going. And you go, all right, guess I'm running past you. And you try to run past it and go, chink, chink, and slap you around a couple times. It, it would, it just sucked. It, I hated those parasites. It was, it was a pain in the ass to deal with, especially in the, the, the part where you're inside the house and it's you and Luis shooting yeah. all of the ganados that are trying to come into the house. Mm -hmm. And then because he doesn't care what, it, what body part he aims for, <laughs> he just keeps shooting people in the head. Yeah. And suddenly there's six guys with tentacles just going. <laughs> Well, like all over the place. And you're like, oh my God, this is the worst. Back in the day, you're like, whoa, me and Luis are having a standoff in this building. It's the awesomest. This is so cool. It's so cool. And then now in the future, you're like, stop shooting them in the head. And then you'd be so pissed. Luis, you keep shooting them in the head. Stop doing that. And you start shooting bullets into him. And there's a special cutscene where if you shoot at him too many times, he turns around, whips around 180s and one shots you. <laughs> I never got that cutscene. No, you've never been so pissed at Luis. You're like, stop oh doing god. that. Oh my god, I didn't know that. Stupid idiot, stop doing that. He goes, adios amigo, or something like that. Oh just, my god. Just takes you out. Oh, good lord. <laughs> a, lot of little, a lot of Easter eggs in that game. There are, Apparently there are a lot. I never even got that one. Um, Hard to believe that I got pissed at that part, and you didn't, though. Oh, I'm sure I got pissed at that part, but I just don't think I shot Luis. <laughs> All right. Or Luis. Luis. Um, what else is there to say about 4? Not much. It's a uh, great game. It was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. It's still marred by some stiff controls. It's not longer tank controls, but yeah, you still, still can't move stiff. and shoot at the same time. You can't yeah. strafe. So Resident Evil 4 still has some stiff controls. Resident Evil 5 improved it. You can now strafe, but you still can't move while shooting. And then Resident Evil 6 allowed you to move while shooting. So basically, Resident Evil 6 is when you finally had modern controls. Well, speaking of Resident Evil 5, what are your thoughts on that game? I loved it. I loved Resident Evil 5. It's my favorite Resident Evil game. Resident Evil 5, for those that don't know, I'm horribly simplifying here. Resident Evil 5 is basically Resident Evil 4, but, but two-player. Yes. There's no escort missions in this one. 
Well, you have a partner, so it's kind of like escorting your partner. Kind of. There is, it's a game from the early 2000s, so there are several turret control parts, because of course there are. They're mandatory. Are there several? I think there's one or there's two. There's two. Yeah. There's the part where you're riding on the truck, shooting everyone that's chasing you, and then the part, again, where you're riding on the truck, but you're shooting the... Uh, Giant monster. The, the yeah, El Gigante. There's only one or two turret sections. Yeah. Still have quick time events. Uh, in Resident Evil 4, you are playing as Chris and I think probably my favorite Resident Evil character, Sheva. Oh, is she now your favorite? Because I remember when that game came out, like you were saying, it's a two-player game, but a lot of people played it single player, and so Sheva would be your AI partner. And the AI wasn't great in that game, so she would die a lot or get you killed quite a lot, so people really hated Sheva. People really hated her, but I think it was just they hated the AI. They didn't hate Sheva. I like Sheva. She's mm, fun. I feel like people couldn't really separate the two. Sheva was well, her AI. Yeah, that's true. I like Sheva. She's a pretty generic character, but I like her. She's, they need to bring they need to bring her back for more games. She's got a, she had a good voice actor. She was a fun character. Yeah. Five, it didn't really do anything new. It didn't five didn't do anything that four hadn't pioneered. No, it was basically, like you said, Resident Evil 4 with two players, which I loved. It was if you're gonna make Resident Evil an action game, then sure, let me experience it with a friend. It sounds great. How many hours would you say you've put into five? Oh, hundreds. Yeah. I uh, easily hundreds. The thing is the main campaign is good, but I think because I played this with my girlfriend at the time. She and I played through it. And we had a blast, but we didn't play the main campaign very often. Only once or twice to unlock a bunch of things. And then I think we went through it hard, on hard mode once, like the hardest difficulty, mm -hmm. professional difficulty, which wasn't terribly bad by the time we got to it, except the turret sections. Yeah. The turret sections were the, like, they were the worst. The, and it's, it's kind of a meme that any game from the early 2000s has a turret section. I don't know why, I but know. pretty much a, a large majority of them have turret sections for some reason. And... Nobody likes turret sections. Yeah, especially if they're difficult. They're, just, they're not fun. Yeah. A little aside here, I think if you have a genre of game and then you want to do a fun little divergence, like this is a, if you've got an action game and you want to include a, a turret section or a puzzle section or something that's not part of the normal gameplay, mm -hmm. you got to make it easy to skip through. Yeah. If you, if you come into a game expecting it to be an action game and then you, they try to stump you with a hard puzzle... You just hate it. Yeah, it's that's frustrating. just a, that's a game killer for most people. Mm -hmm. But anyway, going back to what we're talking about. So, yeah, we didn't play the campaign very often. What we did play was the mercenaries mode. We loved the battle mode. Yeah, it's just a, it's a horde mode. Yeah. I think one of the reasons I didn't prefer or I didn't like 5 as much was because I, I generally prefer to play games that have a story or campaign mode by myself. Mm-hmm. I generally don't really want to play them with other... Also, I was in the military at the time when this game came out. A lot of time, I didn't have anybody to play the game with. You just had to play with the AI. So I just had to play with the AI, which made it somewhat difficult. The AI tries. It tries its best. It does, but it's not great. No. She and I played that Battle Royale mode every day, like two hours after one of us or both of us got back from work. We'd go down there, and that'd be our way to relax. We just go through waves of enemies, and there are plenty of selectable characters in that mode. Uh, we mastered every character, each of us, really. We had our preferences, but eventually got to the point where, well, we've gotten double S ranking with every character on every map. Mm -hmm. How are we going to make this a challenge for ourselves? And I whipped out my TI-86 pocket calculator, whatever those things are, the graphic yeah. calculators, and I programmed it to assign us characters at random. <laughs> So the calculator would say, you are playing as Chris. Player two is playing as Chris. And you are playing map number four. And we'd play Goodness. with those characters. You went you went full nerd on that one, didn't you? We did. And we, we, we weren't sticklers about it. I, I, sometimes he'd be like, oh, I got Sheva and uh, you got Chris. You want to trade? <laughs> sure. That's cheating. <laughs> it is, but whatever. That's cheating. You can't do that. <laughs> it's all about having fun, you know? Yeah, so Resident Evil 5, it was, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, Resident Evil 5 was a lot of fun, especially because there were, um, you could set up combos with your partner too. So in Re Resident Evil 4, like you were talking about earlier, you could shoot them in the leg and then you, a prompt would pop up and you could give them a big old uppercut, yeah. something like that. They expanded on that in this game so you could do some crazy stuff. Like uh, 
If I shot under me in the arm and they staggered, I could kick them towards my partner. My partner would do like some kind of somersault kick and shoot them, kick them back oh, towards I me. Oh, I remember seeing a bunch of those. Yeah. yeah. So there was there was a bunch of fun characters. You could play as a character who could inject the enemy. That's her melee ability. Oh, yeah. That's, um... Uh, Excella is her name. Excella Gion. Yeah, so there was a bunch of different characters. That Gione. Moves. I don't yeah. know how you pronounce her name. So one of the characters could inject the zombie and make him explode. Uh, you could like do some kind of uppercut. Jill would actually do a like a backflip and land on their neck and twist their their heads off with their with their legs. She did like Cammy's move from Street Fighter, which is really funny. They did some crazy fun techniques. If you were playing as Wesker, the antagonist, you could sprint across the entire map at Mach One, oh, and then yeah. give somebody an uppercut with your knee. I remember knee them right things. in the chin and knock their heads right off. Poor Excelligion. She just wanted Wesker's dick. That's all she wanted. Let's not get into the plot too much, but yes, she did. Yeah, she did. And then she got turned into a mass of tentacles. Wesker, I love you, baby! (laughs) Poor Excella. But that was probably where the game definitely stopped being about horror. Because, well, at least least the scary kind of horror. There's still body horror and gross things and everything. There's Yeah, there's still body horror in the game. It's still got some gross-out parts. There's some disgusting giant enemies. There's a huge bat thing. Resident Evil 4 had scary moments, like the chainsaw guy coming after you was scary, and yeah. there were some jump scares, regenerators, the enemy that were basically unkillable, it, it felt like at times, those are all scary, you're, you're just constantly being terrified by these things, it's daunting, but when you've got a partner, everything becomes less scary, everything yeah. becomes less scary if you've got a partner, so the game is no longer about scaring you, it's about being an action game it's basically what it's leaned into i was gonna say when we were talking about the inventory space in this game the reason they they i think one of the other reasons that they restricted it to only having nine inventory spots was because they intended it for one player to be like i'm gonna use a pistol and a rifle or i'm gonna use a pistol and an assault rifle and then you use uh shotguns and shotgun and a submachine gun or yeah like one i will be close range you be long range so it's they, they didn't intend for one person to carry every single weapon like in Resident Evil 4. Yeah, that was that always felt great where your partner would be using a sniper rifle and you'd go, hey, I got some sniper rifle ammo. And then you'd pick it up and bring it over to him. And it felt uh, like yeah, you could throw ammo to each other. Yeah, yeah that was you could that put, was fun. You could put ammo in somebody else's inventory or basically anything. So <laughs> I remember sometimes I would go kill a bunch of chickens and then go to my girlfriend who was trying to actually play the game and she'd be dumping chicken eggs into her inventory. Just egg, 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 egg. egg. There'd just be nothing but chicken eggs in her inventory. Oh, <laughs> uh, there was a fun little uh, Easter egg mm. in that game that if you threw a rotten egg at an enemy, it would one-shot kill them. I don't know if it did, was that strong, but yeah, it was pretty oh, funny. Yeah, the rotten egg would one-shot kill basically any normal enemy. <laughs> yeah. Other than bosses, you could one-shot kill basically anybody with the egg. Yeah, it's crazy. You could actually use a rotten egg as a weapon in that game. Yeah, a lot the, of little silly things. A golden egg, if you ate it, would full heal you. Yeah, which is completely unrealistic. You don't get health from golden eggs. You get health from red and green herbs mashed together. Yeah, you just mash those herbs together. These herbs that grow only in one specific region of the Arclay Mountains that somehow are also in Africa. Oh, crap. We're pronouncing it wrong again. It's herb. <laughs> oh. I need a herb. I need a herb. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to say about Five? It was campy and cheesy, and I loved everything about it. There was a giant crab monster that you fought in an elevator, and you beat it by... Oh, I remember the crab monster. You beat it by shoving grenades in its mouth. I do remember that. You don't I have it was to. a spider. Yeah, spider, whatever. I don't remember. It's been a while since I played it. But you could try to unload your guns into it, and you could just riddle it with bullets until it died. But the secret to getting it killed quick enough was just going up and hitting the prompt to throw a grenade in its mouth when it was stunned. Yeah. And every time you did that, your character would belt out a one-liner... Eat this! Oh, I yeah. hope you choke! Yeah, I do remember that. Have yeah. another one! I remember if you did like five times, Chris would yell, Why aren't you dead yet? <laughs> I Just didn't die know. already! <laughs> I didn't know that. That's great. I love the camp. That is the, the biggest thing that I miss from the, the newer games. Six, seven, and eight. They're just not fun. So let's talk about Resident Evil 6. Okay. Have you played Resident Evil 6? Yeah, I've beaten it. Have you beaten all, I think there's four campaigns? Yeah, to my great shame, yes. Yeah, I beat it too. I don't remember much about it because it's a very forgettable experience. It's not good. Resident Evil 6 just isn't good. I played the I played the three cam, the three main campaigns. The fourth one was released later, I think, that you played, but I only played the, first, the three I main I think the campaigns. fourth one is Ada. Yeah. 
I played the three main campaigns. The thing is, the reception, when Resident Evil 5 came out, the reception was not good. People were like, this isn't as good as Resident Evil 4. And there's another subset of people that are like, this isn't survival horror. You're getting too far from the roots. I'm not being yeah. scared. So the way they compensated for that was Resident Evil 6 was three separate campaigns of three different genres. Yeah. The first genre was Leon's campaign, and that was Which more was like... Which was more survival horror. Honestly... Leon's campaign in Resident Evil 6 is not bad. It's not horrible going it's back the, to It's it. the first time in the Resident Evil franchise post-4 that zombies are back in the game again. Mm. Now they're, they're, they're actual T-virus zombies. Mm. Leon's campaign is actually decent. I, I had fun playing it. It's Leon and another character that they added to the game. Uh, and then you get to Chris's campaign, which... It's very action heavy. I remember it being. It's very action heavy. The first campaign, Leon's campaign, tries to be like Resident Evil Four. I feel like kind of. It tries to be like a combination of Resident Evil Four and Two. It's been so long since I've played this game, but I definitely remember the three campaigns had three distinct feels. Uh, I think Sherry's campaign, the second, the other campaign, the third campaign. Yeah. Tried to be more of a horror game, if I remember correctly. Uh, kind of. I'm sorry, the only it's thing... It's forgettable. The only things I remember from Resident Evil 6 is button mashing a lot. There's, yes. There's a lot of button mashing and quick time events. Yes. To the point of making you want to vomit. It's so much. It's it's too much. It's, it's too infuriating. Many. Yes, they don't use them sparingly. It's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. There's three separate campaigns that all felt radically different. Yet I, I remember almost nothing from any of them. I remember in the first campaign, Leon is fighting with a woman. So, okay, that's fine. And then the second one, Chris is fighting with another soldier who's like, you got to stop being a depressing downer. You got to, come on, be a soldier, man, man up. Oh, yeah, because Chris is suffering from PTSD and is just drinking all the time. Something stupid like that. Which, I, if that had been the plot, if that had been the entire plot of Resident Evil 6, we were just playing as Chris and he has fucking PTSD because he's been through God only knows how many different outbreaks of biological weapons. And he's just... But he is just a shell of a human being at this point. Mm -hmm. If you were just playing as Chris, trying to get your shit back together, <laughs> how, and, and also kill zombies, mm -hmm. that would have been an amazing game. Maybe, if they made the gameplay good, too. If also, they, yeah. if his partner had actually been any of his previous partners, instead of just random new g generic army soldier who's going to be forgotten about immediately anyway. Yeah, who also dies at the end of the campaign. Oh, does it? Like, oh, yeah, he I, dies at the end of the campaign. I don't remember, honestly. Yeah, it's It's... It's so forgettable. It's not memorable. No. It's not memorable. And then, Th and then the third campaign is where you're playing as Sherry Birkin, who is now an adult. Who was, a, who was like a, a secondary character from the Resident Evil 2 so many years ago. Yep. She, and all, uh, her dad is William Birkin, who was the one that created the T-Virus and G-Virus. She's tied into the plot if you look into the lore. She basically, her, she, has, she has instant healing. Or, like, fast healing. That's, like, her ability. She's got some kind of regeneration. Okay. She's got some kind of regenerative ability. And then you play um, it's you play as Sherry and Jake, 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 who is Wesker's son. Wesker had a son you didn't know about. Who's, he's not actually... He is his son, but he's a clone of Wesker. It's... Oh, okay. We got Jake Wesker here, who's now a good guy. His son is a good guy. Yeah. Apparently. Also, Ada is in this game, and she's a... Bad guy. Well, she's always been... Ada has always been kind of like a... I don't understand the plot of this game anymore. Chaotic neutral, I guess. Ada's kind of always worked for different people more for herself than... It, she's always been very self-serving. Mm -hmm. But in this game, there's a clone of Ada who is actually super evil. And then Ada is trying to do something. It doesn't matter. You'd think I would enjoy that because it sounds campy as all hell. They tried to play it too seriously, I guess. I played through Leon's campaign. I had nothing good to say about it. I, <laughs> I for some reason, I played through Chris's campaign. I have nothing good to say about it. They were just, they must not have been offensively bad because I didn't stop playing, but they didn't do anything memorable. I they remember just, nothing about them. They were just a third person shooter. And then I played through Sherry's campaign. And I remember at one point they strip you of your weapons and you're basically trying to sneak around. And it's like, if you get caught, you're screwed. It's like, oh my gosh. This is an actual scary challenge, reminiscent of like 30 years ago. Wow, this is actually scary. And it's over. It was a pretty short sequence. It lasts like, it lasts maybe 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you're taking your time, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. 
there was some there were some things that they did that were kind of neat like there's parts where it's branching pathways so one so if you're playing two player one person will go this way the other person will go this way and you can see each other doing stuff but overall it's just a forgettable i won't i won't go so far as to say it's bad it's just forgettable oh maybe you and i'll go back and play it sometime it's in the just future. Wall, it's like wallpaper paste yeah it's just it's not offensive it's a, but it, i don't care it must have been good enough but it uh if it's bad, it can be laughably bad, but it could just be bland, and we just don't remember anything about yeah, it. Yeah, it's don't just remember bland. Anything. It's a bland game. Then there was Resident Evil Revelations 2. Oh, what came out before that was Revelations, which I didn't play. Did you play it? I have played Re- Resident Evil Revelations and the second one, which, oh boy. They suck. What do I remember about them? I didn't beat them, so I must not have liked them that much. Maybe I beat the first one. Again, very forgettable experiences. I thought the gameplay was okay, but really, no, I don't remember anything about them. Oh, man. You know what came out after Resident Evil Revelations before Resident Evil 6? No. Operation Raccoon City. Don't know anything about that. Oh, that game was a fucking letdown. Mm. It was supposed to be a team. Was it it, Was it multiplayer? I can't remember. Anyway, you had, you had two different teams. There was like the U.S. Delta Force team and then... Umbrella Corps special operations team and they basically they would be like fighting against each other and also there's zombies and I think a nemesis somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, it sucked. Again, you could just lump all of the Resident Evil spin-off games into one giant forgettable ball and throw it away. Yeah. So after Resident Evil 6 came Resident Evil 7, which we played on the channel. Yeah, a good what 5 years ago at this point. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people seemed to enjoy that. It was a radical shift cuz you know Resident Evil 4 was widely praised. Resident Evil 5 had its critics. People didn't like it because they didn't like how it shifted so far away from the horror. Resident Evil 6 tried to appease everybody and appease nobody. Everyone hated Resident Evil 6, so they did a complete reset. Resident Evil 7 is now, for the first time, a first-person game. Which apparently... and And it has gone back to its horror roots. Now it's more of that experience of going from room to room, trying to pick up keys being jump scared, being chased, single player, terrifying. That's that's the route they went. I didn't dislike Resident Evil 7, but again, I wasn't like super into it. I liked that it went more towards survival horror. I liked that they went back to that. Um, I feel like they kind of had to go back. They had to go into first person view because it is, it's been so long that you can't really do anything in third person to terrify a player anymore. I think you can. It just it, it doesn't depends. feel like it doesn't feel like you're experiencing something scary. It's like you're controlling a character, and if something jumps out at the character, it's it's okay. You, I feel like people have played so many video games at this point that you had to go first person if you're gonna be a horror game and you want to stay competitive. I wonder when did PT PT was also first person, when, but when did that come out? Ah, 2016 or something like that. It never came out, did it? When when did the PT demo come out? Hang like, on just a second. It was it was like 2014, honestly. 2014. Okay, I kind of hey, I nailed it then. You did. I kind of wonder because Biohazard came out in 2017. Resident Evil Seven Biohazard came out in 2017. Confusing titles. And I wonder how much PT had to do with influencing Seven. I don't know. When did PT? You say PT came out in 2014. PT came out in 2014. So Seven came out when? 2017. Oh, it's like four years later. Four years later. I'm wondering how much it had to do with that. It probably had a distinct effect. Probably reinforced in some people's minds that it kind of had to be first person. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I have nothing to I have nothing to back that up. That's just a random thought that I'm having is I wonder if it had something to do with influencing it, making it more first person. Um anyway, I don't think it was bad. I thought it was weird that Chris was in it. Cause like it was its own thing. And there are some little indicators in seven that show that it is in the same universe as the rest of the Resident Evil games. Mm-hmm. So there's little things like they, they reference certain reporters, they reference certain characters that are in the other games, and then at the end of the game, at the end of the game, Chris Redfield is in it. So, hey, yeah, surprise, he just shows up to tie this game in with the Resident Evil Just shows series. up, and it, that was, the end of the game, for people like me that were Resident Evil fans, was fucking mind-blowing, because at the end of the game, the... Throughout the entire Resident Evil series, Umbrella Co- uh, Umbrella Corporation has been the bad guys. Yeah. They're the ones that created all the viruses, that made all the zombies. They made all the zombies. They did all this stuff because they were making biological weapons to sell to whoever. Anyway, at the end of the game, the character you're playing as, Ethan Winters, 
is rescued by Chris Redfield, who is working for Umbrella. <laughs> but it's a blue umbrella, not a red umbrella. Okay. So when that happened, I just remember being like, what the fuck? Blue umbrella, this is new. Why is Chris working for Umbrella? Because Chris had been working for the BSAA right. before in Resident Evil 6. <laughs> getting, getting into the plot of things again. Getting... It's fine. It's fine. These are just minor little details. So basically for it's me... Just minor little details. There's hundreds of them though. It's like, why is Chris working for the bad guys? And they didn't really explain it. So that was that was baffling. It was there was kind of a fun Easter egg that the pistol he gives you at the end of Resident Evil Seven is called the Albert O One pistol. It's it's an anti biological weapon pistol. Mm. It's super powerful, and it's based off of a Beretta ninety two, which is the gun Wesker, the antagonist, was using. Also, yeah, everybody from the first Resident Evil was using Beretta ninety twos. So that was kind of a fun little Easter egg. Mm. I appreciated that. But yeah, seven. It wasn't bad. The enemies were memorable. The protagonist was generic. That's the route they went. No more memorable protagonists. It's you now. You're the protagonist. The 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 protagonist is so generic. You're supposed to kind of like slip into his shoes. Kinda, yeah. But it's a shame you lost all those really awesome hunky superhero fun characters. The 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 antagonists were memorable. You had angry can't die father, beehive vagina mother, and. Third character who we keep calling Travis, even though that's not his name. Yeah. Overall thoughts on Seven, though. I think you described it. It's a, I don't remember. The crafting system. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a green herb without a chem fluid to go with it. Because yeah, the crafting... The, the crafting the, system was weird. It's it's, it's not consistent. You, like, it, you In every previous game, you combine a green herb with a red herb. Now you're combining a green herb with chem fluid. Yeah. It's just no consistency. It was weird. Uh, Resident Evil is not a series for consistency. No. And then there's the... I'm just going to bunch these together with the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes. Yeah, Resident Evil 2 remake seemed like a game really enjoyed. I thought it was okay. I, I loved the Resident Evil 2 remake. I will go so far as to say that I think the Resident Evil 2 remake is the best one. I think objectively, I might have to agree, even though I personally prefer 5, I might have to say that if you're getting, if you ever want to get into the Resident Evil series at this day and age, you definitely can't go back and play the old PlayStation pieces of garbage. No, it's really hard to play the GameCube remake. If you want to get into, if you have zero experience with Resident Evil and yeah. you really want to get into the series, play two. Either play seven, I guess, because that's what Resident Evil is now. It's now a first person series. Yeah. It's like a completely different genre. If you want to experience what those games were like, if you want to know what it was like to play Resident Evil 0, 1, 2, 3, Co Veronica, any of those games, just play the second game's remake. Play the remake number two, whatever it is, Resident Evil 2. It's just called Resident Evil 2 these days, which is kind of confusing. But I, I The way I dif differentiate them is I call them the 2 make and 3 make. Okay, well, if you want to play that genre of game in the Resident Evil series, just play the 2 make because that's the best... That is the best version of the survival horror. Resident Evil 2 is absolutely amazing. They changed some of the things. Some of the way the, the story went in Resident Evil 2 is a little bit different. I really liked playing it. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. They got pretty much... They got the feel down. It feels like playing the original ones. It makes you feel like playing like Leon. I really enjoyed 2. Resident Evil 3 make? Don't pay full price for it. Have you played it? I, I, I recently got it. It went on like super sale. Mm -hmm. I got it for like 16 bucks. <laughs> I think that's a very fair amount. The Resident Evil 3 remake was originally planned to be DLC for 2. Oh, strange. Very strange. But they basically went, oh, we can get more money for this. So they made it its own separate game, which they shouldn't have. Even it, if that's the case, you know, that could be fine enough as long as the game is good enough. But it's not long enough. It's, it's too short and there's not really enough extra content to justify making it a $60 game. Ah, I see that. So if it was a 30, if it was a 20 or even, I would say even a $30 game, then it's worth it. Money aside, it's like ignoring the fact that it actually costs money. Would you say that Resident Evil 3 make is just a shorter experience than the 2 make, but it's still a good experience? It's it's still enjoyable. I'm really, I really like playing through it. I've really liked it so far. I, I have some minor complaints about it. They made Jill... Did they lean into the sexuality part of her? No, they kind of... they. It's like they were trying to do two different things with Jill in this game. Okay. On one hand, they were trying to 
they're trying to portray her as someone who is somewhat tortured that is uh, suffering from PTSD after the events of the first Spencer game. Mansion. Yeah, the first game. In the first Resident Evil. Like, there's a scene at the very beginning of the game where she's like looking in the mirror and she starts falling apart like a zombie and she's about to shoot herself with her handgun. Uh, and it's, like, it's, it's a nightmare that she's having. And it's very clear that she is having a fucking time <laughs> yeah. after after what happened in red Cause basically her entire team is dead now like all the people that she was in stars with they're all dead except for chris yeah zombies are a thing now zombies are a thing the alpha team is fucking gone mm-hmm. they don't exist anymore um so yeah it was very traumatizing very traumatizing but then on the other hand there's parts where she's getting chased around by the nemesis and she's going you want stars i'll give you stars <laughs> and it's like they're kind of leaning into the the hokey Chris punching a boulder bit. <laughs> so it's a little column A, column B, and I kind of wish they would have just stuck with one. Yeah. I is- kind of wish they would have either stuck with one or just had her be Miss Superhero Bad. There's a part where she's talking to Carlos and the it's other, like the other protagonist, the yeah. other protagonist. She's talking to Carlos and Carlos. She's like, oh, I got the power turned back on for this thing. Carlos is like, hey, way to go, partner. And she's like, not your fucking partner. It's just like, wow, Jill, way to be a bitch. Hmm. It's like, I, I get it. I, I understand. I just wish they would have done one or the other. Trying to figure out what her character is before you start making that character. Yeah, it's, they tried to do both things. Reminds me of one of the most recent Tomb Raiders that I played a few years ago, where it was her origin story, where she, uh, she does something and she kills a man for the first time. Oh my God, I've killed somebody. No, this is so terrible. And then like, Ten minutes later, I've killed ten more men. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's kind of like that. Yeah. It's kind of like I was actually going to bring that up. It's kind of like the new Tomb Raider, yeah. <laughs> where it's they they're not sure what they wanted to do. They but, weren't sure if they wanted her to be tortured combat veteran with PT. Like in in the beginning of the game, it's really cool because you're like walking around her apartment and you can look at all the different things that are in her apartment. You can see on the nightstand there's just like tons of different pills. Just to help her get to sleep. Mm-hmm. At this point, she says the nightmare the nightmares get worse like every single night. There's people that are watching her, probably from Umbrella. Mm. But then there's like kind of this hokey schlocky stuff that's happening <laughs> later, and it's there's there's a point where you're on a roof and she uh, grabs a dude uh, like a, a dead guy out of a car, and she says sorry as she pulls him out of the car. But then five seconds later. She's getting the car started going, take this, you son of a bitch. And she's about to run over the the um, the main bag. So it's, I don't know. I, I wish they would have done one thing or the other. Okay. I get what they were, I get it, but. Was, was this kind of dissonance in the in the original PlayStation 1 game? No, but because that's in the original PlayStation 1 game. It was, again, kind of more hokey, schlocky, so all, goofy stuff. <laughs> so basically they, they added all this tortured realism and terror terror and stress and everything but they didn't take out the part from the original game where she's kind of dishing out yeah. hot zingers I think, she, I think she says that you want stars i'll give you stars because the the thing you're getting chased around by a big massive nemesis a persistent enemy that a won't pursuer, die a pursuer type enemy you're getting chased around by one of those and he's specifically chasing after jill because jill is a member of stars yeah the, the main the the special tactics and rescue squad yes she says, you want stars, I'll give you stars. Um, <laughs> which is just kind of a hokey line, and I think she says that in the original one. Does she say other lines, or are you just specifically pissed about that one line? She says other lines, but that's like kind of as far as I've made it right now okay. in, the, in, the, in the three make. I haven't beaten the three make yet. It's good, I'm enjoying it. I like playing it. I'm glad that I only paid 17 bucks for it. Yeah. Because it's apparently it's very... Sh- I'm getting Apparently I'm getting pretty close to the end of the game. All right. Get a seventeen dollar experience from that. You give the thumbs up. Yeah, honestly, it's not for seventeen bucks. It's not bad. Mm. I like it. I think they did a decent job. If you want to get into the original Resident Evil games, cost aside, three is another very good place to start. Okay. Wait until you can get it on sale. That's basically that was apparently the biggest criticism with that game is it wasn't enough. There are a lot of negative reviews of that game because of how short it is. I see. If it were released for thirty, forty dollars instead of the what sixty. If it was really, price. I would say if it was released for twenty or thirty dollars, it probably would have been more, would have been better because there's also not a whole lot of re- replayability in it apparently. So in the Resident Evil Two remake, you had basically four separate campaigns. Do you have the same basically, thing? In the no. Thir- no. Is it just one campaign? It's just one campaign. But you play as Carlos too, don't you? You play as Carlos later on in the game, yeah. But it's not. It's not his own separate campaign. No, it's not his own separate campaign. So it's just one campaign. It's just one campaign. 
So Carlos is basically the Steve of Code Veronica. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Except that he's actually likable. <laughs> so if it's one campaign, that's fine. But you got to make it the best damn campaign. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe there's other things to it. Like maybe, maybe you were uh, jumping to conclusions. Maybe there's some things behind the scenes that would add replayability. One of the things I always thought Resident Evil games or horror games in general should do. If you want people to play your game multiple times, then you could have enemies, you know, not just randomly placed, but like there's like a 10% chance you actually get attacked by an enemy in this room. Like there's, a, there's an event here that only plays maybe 20% of the times you play the game. So it's always going to startle you because you have no idea if it's going to actually happen or not. Yeah. So maybe that's actually happening there. Maybe you don't know because you, you haven't played the game three times. I don't know. I feel like that isn't because I've never seen it mentioned. No. Maybe no one's played through it enough to know. I don't know. I don't know. And now we come to the last one on the list, which is Resident Evil 8. No, which it's Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil Village. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, let me pretend I'm Steve. Sorry. Sorry. Resident Evil Village. Claire, I made it to the next game, and I saved numbers for future use. Ah, <laughs> what do you think about Resident Evil Village? It's basically more of Resident Evil 7, and I think it's boring. I liked Resident Evil Village. I, I thought it was fun. I'll I enjoyed never, playing I'll it. I'll never go back and play it a second time. I don't really? hate it. I don't hate it, but I didn't enjoy it. I was bored. I I thought it was fun. I remember almost nothing about it. There was a, a guy named Duke who was 3,000 pounds. He'd sell you gear. Yeah. Uh, there's you. There's your wife, Mia. Th there's Chris being the bad guy. Uh, that's it. That's it. Don't remember anything else? I've committed nothing else to memory from you that game. You don't remember Moreau, the nope. fish man, turning into a giant fish man and going, I'm the best, as he jumps over a thing because he's got mommy problems? Nope. You don't remember Lady Dimitriescu? Oh, yeah, I remember you simping over her. You don't remember... And I remember Ooh. that one boss who yelled at you, oh, that boulder punching bastard. We had a big laugh about that. Yeah. That's it. That That's basically it. Oh, also the protagonist melted because he was secretly a, a, a bio he's weapon. Spoilers. Yeah. That's he was a mold man the whole time. Yeah, that's he all. died at the end of Re he died at the beginning of Resident Evil Seven and became a mold man. That's I guess the plot, yeah. And apparently Mia knew the whole time. I don't remember. That game was so boring and forgettable to me. I actually I really liked Resident Evil Eight. I thought it was fun. Oh wait, there was also the part where we got chased by a baby. I think if you played it by yourself with all the lights off, it probably would have been scarier. I think I would have laughed because it's supposed to be like a giant fetus chasing you. It's pretty gross. It's ridiculous. I liked it. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed playing it. I thought Resident Evil 8 was a was a fun game. If that's the direction that the Resident Evil franchise is going to take, then I think they did a very good job. Cool. I hope other people can enjoy it, because I probably won't. A lot of people liked it. All right. Well, more power to them, I suppose. Just because you didn't like it doesn't mean it's... Just because it wasn't Resident Evil 5 doesn't mean it was a bad game. Yeah. I never said it was a bad game. I just said... I found it incredibly boring and forgettable, and I didn't enjoy it. Wow. Tell me how you really feel. Sucked goodness hope they burn that game wow <laughs> even with lady dimitriescu in it i'm sorry if i want to look at porn i have many other options i don't care about her i can't believe you'd say that about her what funny one-liners did she have none forgot everything she ever if mentioned you, if you kill two of the two of her daughters so it's her and cassandra that are still left and you go back into the main part of the mansion she goes cassandra get in here and then cassandra comes in there and now both of them are chasing you around in there it's really cool <laughs> it's a really cool scene um yeah she's great she's like the best part of that game for me i want more of that <laughs> again you say that's the best part of the game and it's over in the first two hours and you have to play through the other eight hours without her the dollhouse part is pretty cool uh the factory part is interesting I don't remember any of this the we have Moreau documented part is cool we have documented proof that i've played this game with you i was there for the entire journey i remember nothing i i really enjoyed it i actually liked playing that game i thought it was a lot of fun i played through it with you we streamed it and then i edited down the stream and i remember nothing damn that made no impression on you nope village is more a survival horror game than the previous ones. I wonder if maybe that's one of the reasons why you didn't like it that much. Maybe. Because it was more of a survival horror game. I can't really think of any survival horror games I liked. So yeah, I guess if the series has gone back to its survival horror roots, then it's gone back to being a game that I don't care about. I guess that brings uh, that brings us up to speed. There was another one that came out recently. I don't even remember what the fuck it was. I'm sure what there's a that? dozen of other Resident Evil games out there. Uh, which one was it that just came out recently? Um, nope, that was the most recent one. Um, so what do you? What is? What is your favorite 
and least favorite Resident Evil game? I haven't played all of them, but I think I've made it pretty clear that Resident Evil Od- 5 is my favorite. Okay. Least favorite. Out of the ones you've played. Oh, God. Least favorite. I guess which game would I want to go back to and play the least? Gameplay aside. <laughs> the gameplay has to be con- well, considered. Well, okay, fine. Gameplay include, but just like an overall feeling about the game. What is the one that you were just like, I... I wish I could have my time back from Resident Evil 8 so I could play something I would enjoy. Even though I didn't really play it, I just watched you play it, we laughed about uh-huh. it. So I guess it doesn't really count. I definitely wouldn't go back and play Resident Evil 8. I could at least laugh at the bosses from Resident Evil 7. Uh-huh. But Resident Evil 8 bores the shit out of me. Okay, so it's re- for you, favorite is Resident Evil 5. Least favorite is 8. Yep. For me, my favorite is the Resident Evil 2 remake. A good, a good choice, yep. My least favorite? If we're going to exclude all the shitty, obviously bad yeah, side games. We're, we're excluding all of those ones. We're basically just going off of the main what, series. If you Basically, if you had to play all of the Resident Evil games again, but one of them you cannot play, which one would that be? If I had to go through the entire series again. You have to play through all of the main series games. But I get to skip one. Which one do I but choose? But you get to skip one. Do we swap out the first game with the remake and play the yeah, remake? Yeah, we'll swap out the first one for the remake. Okay, so I don't have to play the PlayStation 1 games. You will have to play through every Resident Evil game again, and you have complete mastery of the control scheme for that game. So I, the fact that it's tank controls doesn't bother you. You just but, can do it. But I don't have complete mastery It's anymore. fine. No, it's not fine. I don't yes, want to go- it is. <laughs> Resident Evil Zero, because I think I played that one for about 50 minutes and I hated it. I didn't want to play any more of that. I can probably tough out going through Resident Evil 8 again. Okay. I could probably deal with that, but I don't think I want to play Resident Evil 0 or any of those PlayStation 1 games again. Okay. Um, I was going to say my favorite is the Resident Evil 2 remake. Mm-hmm. My least favorite? <sighs> yeah, I think 6. Do you get do you get a partner for 6? Because if you could play it with a friend, you could laugh at it together and it'd be more enjoyable. But if you have to play through it by yourself with an AI partner the entire time... The problem is there's a lot to play through in 6. It's quite a lot. It's three separate camp, four it's, separate campaigns. Yeah, and you have to play through all of them. The fourth one, you don't get a second player. You're by yourself. Mm-hmm. In Ada's campaign, you are by yourself the entire time. Again, Resident Evil 6 had no clue what it wanted to be. Yeah. I think 6 might be my least favorite one. I probably... I could play through 7 again... I guess I could play through Zero, but like I feel like Zero is so forgettable it doesn't count. I don't know. <laughs> I you know what? Yeah, I'm going with I'm going with six. My favorite's the two remake, and my least favorite is six. I think six's combat was enjoyable enough that I wouldn't hate going through it again. It yeah. was forgettable. It was bland though. My problem is all I can think about in six though. And it is long, yeah. All I can think about is in six though is if we're playing it together. How many times is one of us going to die and we're going to have to start over at a checkpoint? I don't know. That was like a half an hour back. Probably not that much because it's more of a modern game. So you probably just have to bang your head against the wall until you get past the wall. Yeah. There's some bosses in that game, though. There's like the guy that's like, there's a dude that's a chainsaw boss. Mm -hmm. Because remember that from four? But his chainsaw is made out of like bones and flesh. (laughs) It's ridiculous. That is stupid and I love it. Why did you like six more? Well, well prob- you forgot about it, clearly. I did. I, de- I didn't play through it with a friend. I basically toughed it out by myself going through all three campaigns. There's an enemy that's a that's like a regenerator, but he makes donkey noises. When I played that game, I basically sat myself down and said, I am going to play through the entirety of this game. And whenever I do that for any game, I never enjoy the experience I never have a fond memory of it. I forget almost everything. Well, maybe at some point we'll play through... Because I know you want to play through 5 yeah. from the channel, so maybe at some point we'll play through 5. Maybe we'll do 6. Who knows? I, I think that'd be a fun thing to play through with a friend, because I don't think I'm ever going to go back and play through it by myself. Yeah, if if that would be the only way I would play through it, is if I'm playing through it with somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll have to see. Maybe we can do that. Sure. We've already played through 7 and 8. We don't have to touch those again. I mean, I still play through 8 occasionally. Sometimes I get the hankering just to play through it again, so I just kind of... You just play, go noodle around in it. Play through the first few hours, kill Lady Dimitriescu, and then you're done. That's fine. No, I make it all the way to the castle, and then I'm like, hey, Lady D, <laughs> you and me, baby, let's leave this place. It sucks here. She's like, no, I am I'm loyal to Mother... I'm, not, I'm, I'm done telling you about my weird sex fantasy. 
<laughs> I dream of Lady Dimitriescu. <laughs> she and I run away together. Anyway, um, so we yeah. Have eight foot tall children together. Oh my. Yeah, that was our us talking about Resident Evil. Uh, we didn't even talk about the movies. Let's not do that. Let's not do that because they're all bad. I've never watched more than the first one, and I have to agree with you. They're they're not good. All the Resident Evil movies are like somebody's fan fiction about their OC, Do Not Steal, named Alice. Yeah. Make fart noises with my hands. Yes. And then now there's a new one out that is also not good. Just play Resident Evil 2 remake. If you if if you if for some reason you have decided that you want to watch the Resident Evil 2 or the Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City movie, just play the Resident Evil 2 remake. It's on PlayStation, it's on Xbox, it's on PC. You probably have something that can run it. Maybe if you're not into the Resident Evil series, don't try. Because if you enjoy one or two games, then there's like eight or nine different games that might be plot critical that you can't enjoy. You'll have to read the wiki on them. Because the plot's already so confusing, you understand what's going on. Maybe just try some of the other Resident Evil games. See if you can get into them. If you can't get into them, no big deal. You're not expected to like everything. Maybe don't try new things. Maybe go back to your old comfort food and never expand your horizons. There's not much else we could say about the Resident Evil franchise, can we? No, not really. I mean, I guess we could, like, do a bunch of research and go into things, but both of us are lazy and we ain't gonna do that. So why don't you craft for me a Resident Evil 9? Tell me, uh, what's the next game? Ooh, Resident, Resident Evil 8 wrapped up. The main protagonist is dead. His mold got unmolded and now he no longer exists. Gone. Resident Evil 9. Capcom says, Resident Evil suck. We're doing a hard reboot, remake, whatever. What do you want to do? Like, you have full control, full, full they, throttle. They ask me because I'm because I'm such a Resident Evil fan. People love you, so people are going to love your Resident Evil. What are you making? They're like, Mr. Hazard's son, <laughs> you have written... Many the, fan fiction about Lady Dimitriescu. You've written the most erotic Lady Dimitriescu <laughs> fan fiction we've ever seen. And we want you to make Resident Evil 9. And I say, well, first of all, it involves Lady Dimitriescu. And they say, no, it can't. I'm sorry, she's dead. She died at, she died at the end of Village. You can't, you can't do that. Oh, and you're like, no, it's fine. Because you see, this is her origin story 30 years ago. She was there at Spencer's Mansion. She was running the whole thing. Actually, Wesker was subservient to her. You completely forgot about the part in Resident Evil Village where they reference the fact that Spencer visited her. Or Spencer visited Lady Miranda. Oh my gosh, I don't remember any of that. Yeah, that part was in there. That's They, they like tie everything together. That's where he got the Umbrella logo from. That's where he learned about the things. Sure he did. Yeah. I'm glad they planned that all out 30 years ago. Yep. Anyway, what is my idea for Resident Evil 9? I guess, I guess I'm going to paint this in broad strokes. I can't do anything specific. Mm -hmm. um, Resident Evil 9, I would like it if it went back to zombies. I think that'd be cool. Uh-huh. I'm not the right person to be asking about this. Oh, damn. Um, I want you to know that whatever you pick, 90% of people are going to hate it. Oh, yeah. No, everyone's going to hate whatever I choose. Because um, Resident Evil has been so many different things and everyone's got their favorite. Yeah. Dang. Um, I did have an idea because they're supposedly they're working on Resident Evil DLC or DLC for Village. Okay. My idea that I thought would be really cool because of because of the massive positive reception to... My thoughts aside, <laughs> the positive reception to Lady D in Resident Evil Village. Because she was just like... The hype for her took off like a fucking rocket. Well, she was used heavily in the promotional material, too. She was. Wouldn't it be cool if the DLC for Village was... In Village, you get this dagger from a coffin... From, there's this corpse that's in a coffin and he has a dagger. Okay. And it's this guy that was trying to kill Lady D. Because that <laughs> dagger, that dagger can like, it, it's it's what can like destroy her mm -hmm. and start turning her into a horrible monster thing. Mm -hmm. So you get that dagger from the coffin. What if the DLC is you're playing as that guy and it's basically you hiding from Lady D in this castle having to move. So it's more of like what it was in Resident Evil 7 where it's more of moving around, solving puzzles, trying to hide from her. <laughs> because you you already know how that one ends. He fucking dies at the end of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. That'd be great! You could just play as him and, like, hide from Lady D the whole time. Anyway, that all right. That would sound like a little spin-off, yeah. That would, be, that would be a really cool DLC. Oh, what would I want for Resident Evil 9? Oh, damn, dude. I... 
Can I tell you just some things that I didn't like that Resident that other Resident Evils did? Didn't we already talk about that? That for like two hours? I didn't like that there were zombies shooting at there were Ganados shooting at you in Resident Evil five. And four with the freaking machine guns and stuff? Well, there at the end of four there's a few with machine guns, but in like five, there's ones that are running around with like assault rifles. Yeah. I don't really I didn't really care for that. That's fair enough, yeah. I don't so we don't want that. I don't know. I'm not sure what I would do. Okay. I'd have to actually think about it. You have to think about that. You don't know off the top of your head. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head what I would do if I was going to do Resident Evil 9. Maybe remake 4, but like I feel like they're <laughs> doing that anyway. Yeah, yeah. I feel like somebody's going to... They're going to they're gonna remake 4 at this point. It's a cash cow. Yeah. Remake the first one. Remake Resident Evil 1. You remake 1 again. So we had the original PlayStation 1 release. Yeah. Then we had the GameCube re-release. Yeah. Now you want to do it again, but... Just remake it like they did too. Okay. Basically. So it's, it's over the shoulder third person... Remake it like two. So the Resident Evil game you next want is a remake of Resident Evil 1. In the same vein as the remake of 2 and 3. Yeah. You want a re-remake. That's, that's fair enough. You know, that's... It's been 20 years since that game came out. Damn. I think they could do it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, 20 years. Since I feel the... like they could do it at this point. I think they could, yeah. I think, I honestly, I would I would really like that. Mm-hmm. I would really like if they just did a solid remake of 1. And you can, you can change it so there's more or less zombies. You can change some stuff around so that it's more friendly to now mm. but i think that would be i think that would be really cool if they just did a solid remake of resident evil one in the vein of two and three all right what would you like for resident evil nine i don't know resident evil I, for a while i thought that there'd be a pretty fun idea to remake the first three games one two and three and code veronica and stuff like that but do it in the same vein as five so you and a partner could be going through the game together so that'd be pretty cool they could kind of rework the plot of like Resident Evil 2, so the protagonists, Leon and Claire, you could play through them together. And so instead of having separate campaigns, you could just play the game together. But seeing as how they already remade the game, and that's that's probably never gonna happen. But yeah. I would have loved to see Resident Evil 1 remade, but instead of Jill and Chris going on their separate ways, you played the game together. So basically, have you played the Resident Evil 5 DLC where you're in Spencer Mansion? No. There is a Resident Evil 5 DLC where Chris and Jill go back to Spencer Mansion. And I think that, but a longer campaign, maybe not even a remake of the first game, but just more Resident Evil 5 like that, or like that like that campaign from the Resident Evil 5. Yeah. Like the small little DLC. I think more of that would be great. Because for all the criticisms Resident Evil 5 had about it not being horror, Resident Evil 5's like, two-hour DLC where you're playing as Chris and Jill in the Spencer Mansion, that was close. Hmm. There were parts where... I started screaming because I was being chased suddenly. And then when we were finally done, I put the controller down. And she said, you screamed so loud you made me scream. God damn it. It was actually quite, kind of terrifying. It had some moments there. It was good. Well, that that would be pretty interesting if they did that. I think I would like that. Yeah. But I'm, I don't know. They'll probably keep on making more in the same of Resident Evil 8. And it'll continue being... Yeah, because people really liked it. Positively received by the community. And it'll still be garbage. I'll hate it. The Thanks. end. The end. Thanks for tuning in to the Burn Hazard podcast on Resident Evil. Yeah. So. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you are if you haven't played through Resident Evil before, I'm sorry we threw so much stuff at you and confused the hell out of you. That's, <laughs> People just like to listen to us. Maybe. If, they, if we know what we're talking about, maybe, yeah. All right, well. Join us next time when we talk about Kingdom of Hearts because that's... That's always a fun thing to discuss, right? Yeah, I know nothing about that. I could make up a story that's probably better than Kingdom Hearts. You probably could.